Hey, 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 what's happening, everybody? We are back again here on a Thursday night. Glad you guys can come out and join us. It is me, Rajay, along with Joe, Average Joe, Eric, a Lions fan, Todd Wren. Good news on the front is Joe will have a channel at some point. We don't know when. We don't know when, but he's working on it. And, Merry Christmas. Uh, Glad you guys to stop in and join us for a beer and some beer chat tonight. And tonight, as you saw in the title, we're going to be talking about Sierra Nevada. So Joe's going to run down a lot of stuff for that on us and everything. <laughs> you can see in front, I have two Sierra Nevadas right here. The Narwhal, which just started going through the six-pack. Nice stout, letting that baby warm up a little bit. One you may not be familiar with, the Pronto IPA made with mango and hibiscus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, something special. So this is actually the 50-year anniversary special edition they made for Trader Joe's. And I had not seen this before until I went there, obviously, because it's only at Trader Joe's. That's what makes it exclusive. I mean, you can't get anywhere else, really. So um, I don't even know what the ABV is on this thing. So this will be interesting to taste to see how this one comes out. Probably expect a little bit of a floral citrus type mix. Oh, there we go. ABV 6.7%, and as you can see, a nice size bottle. Go big or go home. So that's what I have there. You see Eric, he's got a couple in front of him, some of the traditional type stuff, and then Joe and Todd will get into what they're drinking here. And we're about to pop the top, start twisting some caps, and start throwing some beer down, fellas. So you guys go ahead and talk about what you got there. Go ahead, I'll start with you, Joe. Well, I just want to say, uh, when you say exclusive to that, like a DJ Clue, a Funk Master Flex, what kind of exclusive we got going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Pronto IPA, only available at Trader Joe's. I'm drinking a classic. Not maybe as classic as the one Eric has, but the, like the second best classic they have, which is the Celebration. So I haven't had this in a couple of years. Looking forward to it. Yeah. That's all. That's all I got Slack in many ways this evening. <laughs> it's a great Christmas IPA. In fact, it's uh, one of the thousand beers you must taste before you die. It's in that edition as well. I, I, what I love about the beer, though, and for a long time this was the case, I think a lot of people m didn't understand it was not actually an IPA. I didn't think they used to put fresh hop IPA on it in the original uh, labels. They might have. It could be wrong, but uh, people would be like, oh, it's their, sale, it's their Christmas sale. Let's get into it. And then, like, no, no. It's a fresh hop IPA. Totally an IPA. On a scale one to IPA, totally an IPA. Uh, so it, it's cool that it's a uh, their their Christmas seasonal or their winter seasonal, but it's an IPA. It's not spiced. That's what I like about it. That's what I've always liked. I appreciate that fact. So this is a solid IPA. Mm -hmm. Sure is. And what about you, Eric? Well, I got two probably one of the go-to beers here in Nevada. I have the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Comes in at five point six percent, and then I got the torpedo, which comes in. It says on the label back here seven point two. You can get these probably pretty much anywhere, at least in the Midwest. You can. I don't know about anywhere else, like in the on the east or in the south or in the west or in the southwest area. But I can usually get these pretty much anywhere in this configuration with these. Um, I believe they're four ounce bottles. I paid four dollars for each of these. Oh, you paid four for each of those for twenty four hours. What's that? There were four dollars for each of them. They're like twenty-four ounce bottles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do take a hit in Michigan for sure. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm not gonna get on my soul box and even go down there. <laughs> <laughs> get on it! Get on it! <laughs> but, yeah, these two beers, you guys, you can probably get them anywhere. If you find, if you have Sierra Nevada in your area, you probably have these two. I'm and if you don't have Sierra Nevada in your area, then yeah. What area are you in? What do you have? Yeah, where are you located? <laughs> are you in the middle somewhere of some weird place in Alaska or something? I don't know. Like, not all I can think. Of course, sometimes like Paul doesn't get stuff all the time either. So Well, Paul doesn't live in civilization. Yeah, well, the civilization doesn't want him living there either. <laughs> go ahead, Eric. I'm just going to go ahead and pass the baton off to Todd. Todd, what are you drinking, buddy? Uh, great man, great minds think alike, Joe. I'm also drinking the uh, celebration, and Eric as well. I've got the torpedo on deck. So, what by, by chance? What is the, the bottling date on your celebration? 
It's on the back. It's at the very top of the label in white. It says packaged. Uh, nine twenty-eight. Wow, I didn't realize they produced it that early. Mine's a ten, a ten, ten, seventeen. Yeah. Hmm. Basically, what I'm saying yeah. is yours is super, not fresh, therefore drain poor. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> a couple days yeah. past a month old, so I'll probably just go ahead and just pour it down the down the drain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't want to drink that. Oh, this got some nice bitter crisp quality to it. Nice food. I like you, Joe. I haven't had this one in a while either. DJ Whole here. Foods exclusive. I mean, sorry. That's the pronto, right? <sighs> Man, that is freaking tasty. When's, when's the last time you had that, uh, Todd? You said you haven't had a while. It's been like two or three years for me. Yeah, same here. Yeah. That See, that's why I like nice shows like this. Finger head. It's a lot of head. There. <laughs> yeah, what kind of pull we got going on, Todd? What is that? What is <laughs> Look that? at that one. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, you guys are embarrassing the show. You, you and Eric are battling heads over there. <laughs> Is the guy who didn't prepare for preparing anything. They don't know that yet. Now, thank you. That's great. <laughs> How you know I was talking about this? <laughs> That's true. I think I just outed myself. So, yeah, damn it. Kinda. Uh, there's, enough, you there's enough people being sued for bad behavior out there, as we saw. That's them. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have comments on that one all night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta like the Red Sierra Nevada cap. Uh, that's cool. Uh, I like yeah, it. Yeah, that's a cool one for these celebration. I got the standard tan on this one, but of course the Narwhal is in black. Well, I think I might actually save this because uh, for my channel, I'm buying mm -hmm. one of those um, beer map caps. Oh, beer, okay. beer cap maps. <laughs> I said that backwards. Uh, and this is just cool. <laughs> I, I think I'll throw this in California. You're going to buy the state one? I'm going to buy the, uh, the U.S. one, the big one. That's like... Because once you do it for one state, you're done. Are you going to just have to see it? What are you going to have them represent in North Carolina? Or well, th this one's so huge. Like, each... The bigger states have, like, two or three, so... Oh, that's huge. It's 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 fucking, like, three feet long, so... <laughs> yeah, no, we're in some trouble. No, it's like, it's, I think it's actually, like, actually three and a half feet long. It's it's fucking crazy big. And, uh, yeah, maybe maybe not. Maybe I won't... It's Syrian event. Maybe I won't say Not special. Yeah. You it everywhere. <laughs> Well, you have two options. Like I said, they have two breweries now. So that's true. You know, we start out with that one and then replace it with something else. That's that's true. I, I haven't really thought about it too much. Oh yeah, the green cap off the uh, pale ale. The red cap's a little better. Let's be honest. <laughs> I don't want to be red against green, but I think let's not start is. attacking colors now. <laughs> <laughs> red, green, purple doesn't matter. <laughs> But let's see. Let's get into some of the beer stuff. But first of all, I want to thank all you you guys and all you people watching because apparently somehow I don't know, but I ended up on some list for one of the top fifty YouTube wine video channels, which is kind of weird in itself because it's on feedspot.com. <laughs> but like I said, unless you're a celebrity or a politician or a news anchor, any publicity is good publicity. Wow. So, um, hey, nice work, man. Nice work. Well, I was going down the list, and I'm like, These are, I'm on a wine list. But then I saw Beer by the Numbers was on there, who does really good work on his stuff. And I saw uh, Boondocks out of Texas was listed on there. So I'm like, well, there's other, a couple other beers. So maybe it's all one category. I sent an email to them. Like, that's cool and all, and I appreciate it, but I do beer. But <laughs> are you guys just have one category where you put wine and beer together? I'm a little confused. But I'll put the badge on my stuff anyway because it's hey. kind of cool. Have you actually looked at my channel? Uh, in in the channel name is Rod J Beer Ventures. I don't like. I don't know how you get that confused with wine, but I mean, yeah. So last night I was on the other uh, live broadcast, BDU, and um, I don't know if it's BDU, but it's on uh, Nick's channel. And so Chris is going through stuff, and Lee Lee's like, "Wait a minute! You it's your whole description there it says you just do beer." I'm like, I know, I know, I just. Maybe they ran out of wine channels. They're like, yo, this guy looks very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> but Hillbilly was on there, Hillbilly Wine. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's all, it's all good. It's, it is what it is. And if I, if it works, it works. So, yeah, I'll take the publicity. No big deal there. But I appreciate everybody's watching because apparently they look at views and they look at consistency and all kinds of different stuff. They have a description on how they actually come up with it. That's some al algorithm. But, hey. Cool. So I came in like the number 34 spot of the 50, so that works. 
even if you have some wine enthusiasts and wine lovers coming to your channel telling you how dumb beer is and how much wine is superior to beer, you get that view. Get that view. Click that, click that dislike. Doesn't matter. Get that view. It's all about that view. All about that view. Uh, <laughs> also, to piggyback that, I uh, want to shout out um, someone that is affiliated with like Lee and Nick uh, and the guys in Canada. Mm -hmm. A beer tuber. His name is Donrig13. Uh, I don't think he has posted any content too much over the last six months or so, but he's he goes back to, I think, like 2012, 13 ish when he started. He's in uh, Brunswick in Canada. And uh, he just won a contest for Canada. Innocent Gun did a contest where they did a, uh, I guess, a f the, you know, send in your best flavors. Right. And you could, they, they selected like five uh, of the best submissions. He was one of the five. And then you had to vote on which was the best. And his was a black IPA with coconut, I believe it was, and rhubarb. And he ended up winning. So I believe uh -oh. uh, his flavor wins. And he also, I believe, gets flown out to Innocent Gun in Scotland. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, so shout out, to, shout out to him. I don't know if I'll ever see this. Maybe I'll tell him about it because we are friends on Facebook. And I, uh, I just I thought that was pretty cool to have, you know, like a smaller beer tuber that we, that we know is like, oh, my God, he won something like that. It's pretty cool. So Yeah, definitely. Congrats to him for sure. What's his name of his channel? Don Rig, D-O-N-R-I-G-1-3. Okay. Have to check that out. And let's see. So what else this week? Um well, Todd knows. Well, I told you guys, but Todd knows one of the breweries we had here went out to Mad Tree Berlin out of Cincinnati, and actually had a great interview, which I was planning to upload to the channel, but hit a button or did something where it deleted the video, which really sucks. We had a great interview, and amateur hour. Yeah, <laughs> took some great pictures. So what I'll probably do is upload some of the pictures and put it to like a musical background montage so you guys can check out stuff. But really had a great sit down with them. Got all around the whole brewery, got into the like the chemistry lab part. We were really getting deep into a lot of different details, seeing a lot of the machinery, find out how a lot of this stuff works, all the projections they're doing for upcoming things, and got into a lot of talk about their beer and the stuff they do in the community. So it was really it was a great opportunity to be out there. So I may go out there again. We may run another interview at another time, but um, mad props to them for giving us the opportunity to come out. Me and one of my buddies here, Gary, went out there and – Got a chance to really experience a lot of the stuff and checked out one of their um, newer beers that will actually be coming out uh, next week. And it's actually supporting one of the local planetariums here, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's actually it's called Luna. I hate the actual full name of it. It is Luna Lux. And I think it's Tuesday. Now, it'll only be available in Ohio and Kentucky. Um, but for like Todd, who's on the border there, he could probably get like a Louisville or something too, if he wants to, but it's a white IPA, kind of a winter version where they're using coriander and lemon zest in it. Very delicious. Good stuff, very easy, not very bitter at all. So for people that think IPAs are always going to be bitter, this one actually holds up very nicely in that regard. And, uh, if you get a chance, check it out. You know, they did another one earlier called Entropic Theory. I don't know if you had that one or not, Todd, a few months back. Um, uh, but that was also support like another group for uh, children that were involved in like STEM. So the whole science technology program. And so they're, they're doing some pretty good things there. And that's where the fun comes in when you're dealing with like craft beer and independent beer, a lot of stuff they're doing in the communities and stuff. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then going from that swing. So this week, as you guys all know, ran a poll on uh, Bourbon County, so, mm -hmm. you know, whether or not you think it is craft because by the technical definition, which is clear black and white, it wouldn't be considered craft under that definition. But it was more of a question to people, what do you think in your mind, though, do you think is craft? And surprisingly, the poll results came back and were 53% said no, 47% said yes, which was a little closer than I thought it was going to be. I was thinking it'd be 60-40, maybe 65-35. But a lot of people that I was surprised came back. And, of course, some of the things that you may have seen on some of the Facebook groups that I ran it through, it got to a point where at some point it started, people started attacking other people or saying little things and little comments. And it's just kind of interesting, the whole play. And, you know, if you, like I said, if you look at the straight definition, you have to say, well, it's not craft if you're going by that definition. But craft in itself may be at a point now where it may be time to move past that and just – go ahead and just say if it's independent or not and kind of leave it alone at that. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on that at all. I mean, is it getting to a point where it's getting too much 
overbeard if something is cracked or not. I mean, people are going to drink the beers they like. The, your average consumer, I don't think, is going to actually <laughs> – I see what you did there, Joe. I saw what you did there. <laughs> so your, your average consumer isn't going to walk, I think, go down the beer aisle and say, hmm, I only want a craft beer type thing. Or they may, but it's kind of like they're not going to say, well, Golden Road looks good, but they're not going to say they're not craft or not going to drink their beer or whatever or Elysian or something like that and everything. And now the big shakeup this week, right? So it's Avery. So Avery is now acquired, and they give them a 30% stake. Technically, they're not going to be considered craft now, just like founders. Um, people say, well, there is a Spanish company, and it's just a, it doesn't matter. By the definition, they won't be able to use that craft label. So I don't know what your guys thought of all this stuff that's kind of heating up now. The Brewers Association does a lot of good things to try to help a lot of the smaller brewers, but is it, is it at a point now where – they need to actually go back and reinvent themselves because I think they're kind of losing their foothold because we know that they've made changes in the past too. And I think people look at them, they say, well, you know, you guys are kind of arbitrary too because when you wanted to keep Sam Adams, you moved your barrel count or you do this other stuff to try to keep brewers. And so on your end, you're also doing stuff that doesn't make you seem to be 100% legit either. So I don't know what your guys' feedback are around that whole the whole situation. <clears throat> My thought on that is if it's – 49% majority or 51% majority ownership. It's, to me, it's in, in, in the company that's buying them is leaving them alone and letting them be what they were before. As a greater distribution opportunity and money to there may be, uh, you know, trial beers or whatever to do some more things that they would normally maybe not, didn't have the funding to do. Mm-hmm. The great thing that they did before, I don't really see where it's any different, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm going to take this non-PC for a second, Rod, so I apologize. But uh, as far as my fucks given meter goes, absolutely none. Uh, and the reason for that is because this. I appreciate you doing a disclaimer, by the way. No, I did. So, you know, everyone can just turn away earmuffs, whatever. Uh, no, but in all honesty, what it comes down to is uh, how much you really – care about it like it is, other people it's just like anything else in life and how much you you really care about it personally myself i think what you said earlier about the brewers association changing their their tune and moving the barrel count for people like sam adams that for me discredits what they're doing a little bit because that's bs if you're going to put if you're going to define craft beer or something you don't move the needle so you know you can include like some of the bigger ones i the de the definition of what is a craft beer is defined by the Brewers Association. So it's how much do you care about the Brewers Association is what it comes down to. Me personally, not I don't really care about them. And the reason for that is because of the Sam Adams stuff. They're just going to change stuff, whatever fits their bill, whatever works for them. Um, simple fact of the matter is I always judge a beer on what's in the bottle, what's in the can, what right. I'm drinking. And I, and I care less about... Uh, the outside stuff. It's just like, it's like anything else. I, I mean, I will occasionally shop at Walmart. I don't like to, but sometimes I'll go there. Uh, I'll buy, you know, shampoo from Johnson and Johnson or Procter Gamble. I don't really care too much when it comes to the, I'll eat at McDonald's once in a while. I mean, it's one of those things where so many people are hypocrites within the craft beer uh, community because they'll be like, I'll never do this. And then, you know, what'd you have for lunch day at McDonald's? That's a big conglomerate that you're supporting that does a lot of terrible stuff when it comes to business practices. They're not any different than AB and Beverage. They're just in a different field. So I feel like if you're that that gung-ho about supporting craft beer and will never buy that, you should probably apply that to the rest of your life. Because if you're not going to buy an AB and Bev product because of their business practices or their conglomerate or their crushing craft beer, think about McDonald's. Think about other stuff in life that you support that are doing the exact same thing, but 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 because it's not craft beer, you don't care. Correct. Which kind of you're being a hypocrite, but also at the same time, your opinion at that point is kind of invalid because you're just cherry picking. You know what what, what where you're going to be the hero or the savior or the good person, and it's like no, either apply it all around or don't apply it at all. But the only thing I would say to that, and this is kind of the devil's advocate position, is like some of the other spots, like. I don't know if McDonald's is are is doing things that are affecting, you know, mom and pop down the store in their restaurant business. 
They have could be. Child. I mean, they're undercutting on price of what you may pay to McDonald's on a burger versus what you'll get at their burger. But, I, but most of the time, mom and pop burgers, as an overall burgers, are better taste than McDonald's. But McDonald's has this spot for the convenience factor. Sure. And I think when you look at some of the conglomerates out here, now some of them aren't going to do anything. Like Heineken hasn't really done anything with Lagunitas. No. But um, you know, but if some do put pressure on like hop farms, we don't want you to carry this and this, which other local breweries need, then that becomes a different situation in itself. So I don't know how much it gets into the intertwining of that. Um, but the I think the ultimate thing is, you know, people will control their dollars and if people are like beer and drink beer, it's like, okay, so Avery's thirty percent now. I'm not gonna stop drinking Avery because I like Avery. I just don't call it craft beer. Like I drink a golden road or I'll drink a goose Island if I like it. And it's kind of like I do it, but like when I do reviews, I don't put those reviews in craft beer groups that are supposed to be craft beer groups because mm-hmm. they're not seen as craft beer by the definition. I keep the definition pretty much straight. And if it's not meaning that, then I don't put, cause I'm thinking everybody's looking at it. Well, apparently some of these groups now, like I was just talking to someone yesterday and one of them, they're putting other stuff in there that don't meet the definition. So I'm like, just make it a beer group. Just say beer group, whatever you're doing, and drop the craft because you're not putting craft beers if you're going to follow the definition. I've always hated the term craft yeah. when it came to beer specifically. Yeah. Do you, do you think they should just drop that whole like labeling of craft? I mean, it's beer. Yeah, you, you know, there's not there's not like a there's not like a craft wine. Is there like a division of craft wines no. compared to yeah. other wines? It, well, <clears throat> smaller, like micro to macro, yes, but I don't think it's the like craft it would be the definition I'd use in that situation. Right. But it's, it's kind of the same in beer though, right? I mean, you have macro and micro, yeah. so it's like. And, and and to say that like a Budweiser or a Coors or whatever, it's not crafted. It's crafted extremely well for what it's supposed to be. I mean, they got their signs down to a T. Those brewers who brew that beer know what the fuck they're doing better than a lot of people. So I, that's why I hate the actual word, term craft. Like micro to macro, that's one thing. That's an appropriate term. Yeah, craft is just kind of just like is kind of a substitute word for like local in a sense. I know you know what I'm saying. Like, uh, I think it's a better word for fancy. It's not distributed everywhere, so it's kind of a it's a craft beer because nobody else knows what to call it. You know, I think it's I think it kind of carries away like that. It's almost like. I think that's why you have the labels coming out saying independent now, mm-hmm. even though not all the small breweries are putting them on their bottles. It's funny. I think of craft beer and going back to my, my days growing up, you know, I grew up, I, I love all kinds of music, but I love hip hop. And I look at it like back in the nineties. Right. And I remember being back in school, like we used to break MC hammer records on the radio station. Like someone say, like, can you play MC hammer? We don't play hammer. We take one of his records. We were cracking the station because we felt like he was selling out. And from us in the in the hip hop environment, what we saw was the more mass media that got involved in it, the more these major companies got into it, it was going to become more watered down. It's going to become more commercial, and it was going to lose the essence. And I think you see the results of how that has happened in hip hop. And I kind of look at it the same way with craft beer. As you're getting more and more of the corporate hands involved, you do lose some of that essence of the independent. You know, when I was in yeah. school as a DJ, we had tons of labels that you could get your record cut on Interscope or Priority or all these other different ones. And then now it's like limited to where maybe it's like 10. And so voices aren't all getting heard because there's only certain markets for it. And I think when you look at it like that versus how it was in hip hop, you kind of see that same type of thing. And, you, and not just hip hop, you can even say like in punk and some of the metal and some of the other groups that were kind of these niche plays. Once corporate got in there, like people now that don't listen to Metallica, they said they sold out. You know, it's kind of like, well, they're still making good music, but now they're backed by Warner Brothers, whoever it is, where before they were in that independent label and the independent grind to them. I I think the biggest issue, honestly, is as is is something you said about like the market space or the uh, the market in general. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, I think a lot of people get uh, upset about the fact that, say, like in the situation where AB InBev buys someone's more shelf space is going to AB InBev and they control the shelf space. And it's harder and harder for newer breweries or breweries that want to up their distribution to get into those markets and get shelf space that is appropriate for them. I've heard that quite a few times in the last couple of years where people were getting denied shelf space or, or even being denied a, a tap at a certain uh, bar uh, where, you know, AB InBev or whoever it was has, you know, a, a grasp on like 80% of the taps. And there's, you know, if you, if you have 20 taps, 
and 16 of them are owned by AB InBev, and there's four rotating, like, uh, micro or, or independent or whatever, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's, that goes a long way to upsetting a lot of people. Uh, you know, you, you, to get to get your name out there, you need that shelf space. You need uh, to be on tap at bars. Otherwise, you can't – every brewery cannot just be brewery only, where you got to come and have everything at brewery. There, there has – there, there has to be a place where people can just be shopping at their local grocery store. They go to their local bar and you have something on tap for them. Otherwise you're not going to experience the vast majority of the breweries, even in your area. Right. And I, and that's what you end up happening. You have like a situation where if the floor was here for everybody to get it before, now the floor is up here and not everybody mm -hmm. can make that jump to get that opportunity to get out there and get up to that floor. So that's where you run into situations that you have to be careful of. Like I said, and I related, I think for me, the whole music analogy makes the most sense because you saw like how, you know, craft is really an independent type thing and you're building up in your community, you're kind of growing it out. And a lot of these groups that do the sounds, you know, grunge, for instance, you know, when grunge was big in the nineties and it was actually making its way through. And then once corporate hands got on into it, it was going like by the early two thousands burnout already, you know, where stuff had didn't get opportunity to really run a fuller course than it could have. So I think in some way they have to reinvent themselves to help avoid that from happening but I don't know if, if calling it still craft is actually still the way to do it. I think some people are getting burned out on that word and there's some overkill yeah. taking place. And it gets back to two that they didn't hold ground when they were supposed to hold ground. So Sam Adams is over 2 million. Okay. Let them go. Let them go to what? the brigade. Cause the people say, well, Yingling, for instance, Yingling mm -hmm. is craft because Yingling meets every step what it takes to be a craft beer. They mm -hmm. meet all the definitions. And the people say, well, how can Yingling be craft? Like people were saying today, you're going to tell me Avery's not craft, but Yingling is? Well, yeah, by the definition, that's how it works. They, they're they craft. Yeah, and, and again, that's according to the Brewers Association right. definition, and that's how much you care about that. It's 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 one of those things. Like we, So many times you'll you'll get on chats like this, or even in the middle of a review, you'll be watching somebody's review, and they'll be like, oh, I don't like this beer. But remember, beer is subjective. Uh, everybody knows beer is subjective, but even in this situation, this is subjective, the way you view it. Like if you, if you want to take – the Brew Association definition as something that matters to you, that's subjective, whether or not you want to, you know, take that as being the end all be all of definitions for craft breweries. It's like at the end of the day, though, it really doesn't affect a lot of us. And I feel like the whole Brewers Association with the independent sample all stuff, that's more often than not for, and I don't use this word negatively because I was there at a point, but the more uneducated, ignorant craft beer drinkers or ignorant beer drinkers. And again, I'm not using that word ignorant as you're an ignorant piece of shit type of way. I'm using it as in you're <laughs> ignorant to you the amount of I mean, ignorant, you don't have the knowledge yet. Yeah. No, they're, they're yeah. And so people, when you, when you hear ignorant, you're like, wow, you know, you're offended, but I don't mean it that way. What I mean it is that <laughs> you, honest, ignorant. you honestly just, you're, you're, you just don't, you're not aware of the levels of, of this for people that are into it like us. And you might not even care. A lot of people who are the, that, that this is affecting, they might not even honestly care. They just want to go in to their local, uh, bottle shop, grocery store, and just drink something that sounds interesting to them. The last the last thing they're worrying about, whether or not this is a macro company or a craft beer company or whatever, it's like, does the beer taste good? Because if so, hey, I'm, hey, I'm one of those people. There we go. And I'm also one of them people. I, 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 think, I think all of us here will buy both craft and micro uh, or uh, macro at times. And for me, is like when you talk about Bourbon County, uh, I think my answer to you originally, Rod, was – as far as the definition goes from the Brewers Association, no, Bourbon County and Goose Island is not craft, but what's in the bottle is craft because Bourbon County specifically is a beer they haven't messed with. They haven't changed. It's still awesome for at least in my opinion, it's still very well made. They haven't done anything to it. So because someone bought them to me, I instantly don't look at the beer in the bottle and go, Oh my God, it's terrible. It's like Avery <laughs> being, being bought out this past week. I totally was going to go and drain pour every Avery bottle in my cellar. But then I was like, I paid money for that. And just because someone bought them doesn't mean those beers are terrible. And probably the beers are still going to be really good for a long time on the shelves. And it, nothing's going to change just like it really didn't change for founders. And it really didn't change for Lagany is the only thing that changed is who owns them and it, it's all up to whoever owns them whether or not they're going to change these recipes whether they're going to use uh, less quality ingredients whether they're going to mess with the production of it and so many people automatically from the get-go are like oh my god i'm not going to buy them because everything's gonna be terrible in six months give it some time if that happens 
yeah, don't go buy Lagunitas if all of a sudden all their stuff is not as quality as it used to be. But, you know, let's see what happens before you start going crazy. For Avery specifically, I don't, you know, they're not bought out by Avery and Bev. It's a, it's, a, it's a smaller percentage. Their stuff's going to be probably really good for a long time. Yeah. So it's going to work. Were you going to say yeah, something? I think, you hit, the, I think you hit the hammer, hit the nail on the head there with that when it's, it's, it's kind of my look at it too is it's what's in the bottle. It's how it's crafted. So are they using is it you know sugar based or is it actually still still pure beer made? You know what I mean, like uh, not on the great mass production. And, and the fine line I kind of have with it is like with your stones and your Sierra Nevada is that's mass. Yeah. Where do you draw the line as to what is craft and what is not? Because to me, it's like stone, which is still I guess technically by definition is a craft bre craft brewery. As a Sam Sam Adams, but how is that considered? You know, considered really craft when it's distroed so much. And that's what all these other companies, like founders and whatnot, that are selling a percentage of their company, is it's just growing their their distribution in the beer, but it's it's getting it into more people's hands. I don't see that as a being a bad thing. You know, more people can enjoy them. No. Before we jump over to Eric, because I think Eric wants to say something. I just want to get this out because I'm old and I'm going to forget it. But uh, what's stopping the Brewers Association from just, you know, lowering that arbitrary number of, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> the, the what is it, the um, barrels that – Well, yeah. one two, now it's six million. So, yeah, they could adjust it. Well, what's all of a sudden? It's like, oh, it's two billion. Now there's six breweries that are tactically no longer – it's like they can do whatever they want. Literally, they could do whatever they want. It's again how much you believe in them, and it's well, just I mean, it, it is made up of some of the independent brewers. So I mean, they have to get a consensus, I guess, to do it. But yeah, like someone said today, okay, so everybody's selling out thirty percent of state. So why not just make anything under thirty percent or less? You're still yep. a crap brewery. Who says they won't do something like that, right? And then hey, Avery founders come back, you know. So yep. what were you going to say, Eric? I'll let you know, you've been pretty quiet there. No, no. I Joel pretty much hit on all the all the points that I make. To me, I, I, you guys know that I'm an American adjunct lager drinker. You know, I'll drink Pabst Blue Ribbon. I'll drink Miller High Life. I'll drink Keystone Light. I'll drink Sierra Nevada, what we're drinking today. And I'll drink Bourbon County Stout. To me, at the end of the day, it's just all beer. It's just different styles of beer, really. Oh, I, I, like to your point. <laughs> easy, <laughs> oh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not with us. <laughs> Simmer down. Simmer down. <laughs> yeah. Well, go ahead, Eric. Go ahead. <laughs> but the point where he said, he goes, I give zero fucks. Yeah, that's that's exactly my point. It's just all beer. I don't give a shit about the craft designation or anything like that. It's just beer. It's just in different style. And, and, and here's something, uh, what you just said, Eric, is great because I, I feel like that. Forget the fact that I drink 99.9% craft or micro beer i don't have anything against macro drinkers i have nothing against anybody who likes macros because i don't care what you're drinking and neither should anyone else that's yeah. i think that's where it comes into uh, the whole argument like you're talking about people attacking one another who the hell cares what another person is drinking if someone wants to go drink all the miller high life in this world and they enjoy it two thumbs up enjoy the shit out of your miller high life <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. That's how this world works. Enjoy what you like. Life is too short to sit here and preach uh, about what you're drinking, what you're eating, what you're wearing, what you're buying. It, I don't care if you like Apple or Android. I don't care if you like McDonald's or Burger King. It, none of that shit matters because enjoy what you like. And the rest is irrelevant. And, and when it, I know I'm, I say that from a place where I know this is a, 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 craft, a craft beer show or a beer show in general. And I know we all like talking about beer and stuff and a lot of these points. And it's just it gets so frustrating when you see people on social media attacking other people or, or like my opinion matters more than yours or what I drink is better than you. No, it's not. What you drink isn't better than me because if you like that stuff, cool. I like what I'm drinking. Leave it at that. There's, there's, there's no reason exactly. to attack. There's no reason to be get upset about it. It's, it's fine. Right. Right. And like, like Sierra Nevada, is that considered a craft or is it considered a, I, what it, what's the other term you guys use? Is it, or is it micro, micro, macro? Well, like yeah. after I, I, independent, I'm drinking the pale ale. I like the pale ale. Oh, I'm gonna go to the torpedo next. You know what should be considered, Eric? Really tasty what? beer. That's what that, <laughs> like what we're drinking is really good. That's what it's. I mean, we're enjoying it. Right. Really fucking good beer, guys. 
like, don't get me wrong. After this is over, I'm going to take the celebration bottle and break it against my wall because they sell six million barrels a year or whatever. So fuck them. But at the same time, like, it's really good beer in here. Like, I enjoy it. But I, I just, at the end of the day, right? I just don't get caught up in all that stuff. It's just beer. If it's good beer, drink the good beer. It doesn't matter if it's a Budweiser or a High Life or whatever it is. Yeah. It makes for good. It, it makes for good discussion. Up until yeah. a point, and when it starts to like you're talking about turning into personal attacks and stuff, that's where for me it's like I'm done. Like it's it's cool to discuss it. We can all have our opinions and civilly discuss it, but once it turns into like you're an idiot because you like this or you're a piece of crap or whatever, it's like, yeah, I'm done. Like it's just yeah. beer. Leave me alone. I mean, somebody sits there, they want to drink, you know, Miller Light or Roller Rock or mm -hmm. uh Sierra Nevada or Mad Tree, whoever mm -hmm. it may be, you know, that's their choice to actually choose the beer. Um yeah. And it's up to them to enjoy it. Like, like I always say, if you like it, then drink it. That's that's your choice to actually do it. Um, for me, I actually, you know, like I said, I don't – I'll drink those beers. I just don't usually call them craft beer just because the definition is out there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not for, that's for people to make in their mind. That's what I was the interesting point that I was at point of that question was what do you consider craft in your mind? Because I wanted to see what individuals had thought about it, not what the association had actually said about it. Because, you know, in the question, I said the association technically does not consider it craft because it doesn't meet the definition. So, And you got a wide range of responses, which was good to see because, you know, everybody was thinking for themselves for the most part in, in, in the, you know, the poll. And I think, like I said, you, you poll 10 people about it, you'll probably get 10 different responses or at least like eight of them will be different. Yeah. And it's, it's good. People can think for themselves. And it's nice to see. It's nice to see that, like, an ar again, this is an arbitrary definition. Because that, I mean, the Brewers Association is the Brewers Association, but they're going to define craft however they, they want to. They've moved it before. They might move it again. It's whatever the association, all the members, I guess, have to vote on it, decide. So, yes, technically not defined as craft, but do you care about it or not? I think that's a better way to go about it. Uh, you know, it's, it, makes, it makes, like I said, makes for an issue discussion awesome. up to that point. Yeah, funny part of it is their, their third part of that. So, you have – good. Uh, were you going to say, Todd? I was going to say, I also throw it around because most, unless you're just kind of in, let's say, the craft community, it's just a way of, of distinguishing you, whether it's micro, it's either micro or craft nowadays, it seems. There's no, or determining if it's micro or whatever the case may be. It's either one of the big conglomerates or it's, there's no like, there, a lot of people don't distinguish between the two. Other than it's just craft, which is not one of your uh, beers out there. Yeah, I mean, but micro is going to micro will be craft, just like you know, nano would be craft, and that. But, but, but I mean, I think are, craft now is a term can use if it's not Bud Light or Light Coors, whatever. Yeah, it's automatically, yeah, it's basically your non your non big ones are calling craft. Yeah, but it's funny because you know you look at the. The definition for craft by the association, one is the no more than 25% owned by another beverage conglomerate. Um, the second one, no more than 6 million barrels. And the third one is you have to use traditional or innovative products. Well, if it's not traditional, wouldn't it be innovative? Why do you even need the third part in there? Because <laughs> <laughs> if it's innovative, it's not traditional. <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, if you're talking about traditional, you're talking about barley, hops, malt, or barley, right. hops, yeast, and water. Like the yeah. whole Rheinsge bite, right? Like if you're not doing it by that, then I guess everybody is. Yeah, like, craft. you can respect a Rheinsge bite, right? Because they said it, we only do this and you mm -hmm. only do this and that's it. Yep. So that's their purity law. Yeah. So, so if you see something Asian barrels or with adjuncts or whatever, you're not craft according to them, I guess. I don't like, but you can be innovative. Know. But I would. They don't want to call it beer in those countries because you're not. You have to follow the right rising about law. And but they and, stick to it. They say this is it, and this is how we're going to call it beer. Just like in Texas, if you're a certain level, you're automatically malt liquor. Yep. Even though you're not malt liquor, we're going to call you malt liquor. Yeah. That's on them. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, interesting discussion for sure. To go back to one of your one of your point you were talking about, like if you like Rolling Rock, I will say this: if you like Rolling Rock, you're an idiot. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I hate Rolling Rock. Really. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of college kids out there. I remember liking Rolling Rock in college. It, it was the when we did the uh, beer analysis on uh, Nick's channel. It, it it was the first beer I ever had. I had it at camp uh, when I was 13. My grandma let us have it, and yeah. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> so worst, worst, bear, they, worst beer memories because that's in PA. That's what they're drinking is Rolling Rock and um, not an ideal first beer. Just not great. Yeah. <laughs> it's a starter <laughs> beer. And then, then we drank it again and I was like, yeah, this is really good corn soda. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, if you guys, I, I don't know if anyone has any like finishing statements here, but I would like to get in the comments because we yeah, actually have actually, go ahead, go ahead. You guys all good? Fire away. All right. All right. Craig from Kent Beer Reviews is here. He says, good evening, gents. Hello, Craig. Hello, Craig. What's up, yeah, he, Craig? That's how he starts his, right, all of his videos. Hello. Yes, that's right. <laughs> he, said, uh, <laughs> he said he had uh, the Sierra Nevada Celebration Ale 2017 on keg last weekend in London. First time trying it. Fantastic stuff. Um, and, and then with your two beers, he says, uh, Rod, you have hashtag beer porn. Right there. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a feature film. <laughs> oh boy. He uh, he also says that I don't know if he's asking this as a question. He did not include a question mark, but uh, he says you drink a lot of barley wines, Rob. I do drink a lot of barley. I like barley wines, especially as we get into winter. You'll see more of those reviews coming up. Oh baby, I like the English barley wines, baby. <laughs> All right, uh, Gabrielle oh, Salea oh, yeah. says uh, hi. Hey, Gabrielle, how you doing? Uh, Backwoods Billy Craft Beer Reviews says, hey, I have smashed the like button. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Billy. Always appreciate that. He also says he 100% agrees with the Craft Beer Association going crazy. He says, and he continues, in my opinion, craft brewery definition is craftsmanship. I have no problems with macrobrewery owning a micro, nano, or craft brewing company. Okay. Uh, Bum from, I, I, he says PH, which I don't think, he, I don't know what that, I, see, cause PA is, Pennsylvania is PA. Pitt would not be PH, I don't think. It would be Philly. It's usually, it's usually PGH is Pittsburgh, but it's Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, maybe it is Pittsburgh. And he just, yeah, yeah, he's Pittsburgh. I, I know that much. Um, he says, if it's good beer, I'll drink it. I don't care who makes it or who owns it. Oh, we know, but he does the malt liquor report, so he's not turning yeah. anything down. <laughs> he does yeah, it, Billy. There's my player. They're doing malt liquor, yeah. Yeah, Billy D knows what's up, too. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, Backwoods, has subscribed to Gabriel's channel. He also says, recently, the restaurant and bar magazine and Wall Street, all Wall Street Journal said, craft beer dipped 2% imports rose, especially Mexican lagers. Now, I wonder on that if the craft beer dipped because other companies are being taken out of the craft beer area. Like if you take founders out, not being out part of craft beer sales and yeah. macro, you're going to have an impact. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I again, it's it's one of those things where they can just sensationalize a, a uh, article or numbers or whatever. But like, what goes into way, those numbers? And mentioned in founders, I see a lot of people out there trying to get CBS. Yeah, I'm going tomorrow nine. I'm going to nine a.m. to get CBS tomorrow. I see some of say people complaining about other breweries selling out. I'm just saying, yeah. Founders is not crap. Yeah. I don't care what it is; it's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's good, right? But you know, just, I am, if you're up there crying about, I've got wicked, a bottle of about Wicked Weed or Elysian or something like that, and you're out there getting CBS, you're no yeah. better. Yeah, you should get power. You guys will probably better than I will. That's the problem. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I know around here a lot of places are releasing it tomorrow and uh one place nine AM, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna try <laughs> to get it. I'm just gonna get a single bottle because I mean it is, it's gonna be twenty five, thirty dollars, so I'm not looking to buy like more than one. But I'd like to try CBS again because it's amazing beer and uh have it bottle for it's one my time. Get, get, two, get one now and get one later to, to have next year and see how it ages. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to do that, but uh, or towards Saturday. the end of towards the end of winter, I don't know if it'll last long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On Saturday, I'm going to a, uh, a canning release of uh, other half beers that are here, and uh, is, I'm I'm gonna be poor. I'm gonna be poor is what it comes down to. A lot of poor, poor stuff happening. <laughs> Some breweries do take check direct deposit, so just so much. That's that's, that's, that's true. Give <laughs> give them a check and be like, don't cash this for about three months. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> um, After work. To go down to my local craft store, and if they got it, great. If not, that's okay. I'll move on. You're in Michigan. I, I actually, our local, my local uh, liquor store, they're having a raffle or did a raffle on Facebook, and actually uh, was a lucky draw on that one. So I actually have a bottle on reserve. Big win, big win from Todd. What is the price on it? Did they tell you yet? 
Uh, I think it's twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, let's freaking buy dinner in beer form. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I had it at the same liquor stores festival. Uh, they do a, a summer festival every year, and uh, I had it two years ago. I had it on tap, and I think I drank the whole keg. I'm not one hundred percent sure, but uh, I was pretty close. Probably, it's it's probably one of my top five beers I've ha- I've ever had. In my beer. Some of these stores have like feats of strength competitions. You have to wrestle to get that bottle. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I plan on power bombing at least a half dozen people through random tables tomorrow. It's gonna be fun. Diva, a forearm smashes. Yeah. I just I just gotta find a random guy and just call him Diva. 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 Uh um, Backwoods also says Bourbon County, Samuel Adams, Utopias. Uh, I don't know what he's referencing. I guess talking about like I don't uh, great big beers, maybe. If you want to touch on that, Billy, I'd, I, I guess we I, I lost because it, it's been a while since we read comments, so I don't know where we were in the conversation. Um, Craig from Camp Bear Review says it's if it's good, I will buy it again. Hashtag that's just me, Craig. I love you, but stop with the hashtag before I choke you out. No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hashtag in the comments. Yeah, there's no hashtag again. Keep going, freaking... Craig, keep going. Hashtag stop it. <laughs> hashtag no. Hashtag never again. Hashtag no more reading your comments. <laughs> he, says, he also says barley wine comment re top 50 wine reviewers. Ah, barley wine. I see what he did there. Ah, oh. I did a lot of barley wine. <laughs> nice. Um, Bum says the pH is for Penn Hills, a suburb. Oh, Penn Hills, yeah. I had friends in college that were from Penn Hills, and I went to West Virginia. It's not it's quite your malt liquor report, but you're still dropping knowledge on us, and that's appreciated, Bum. <laughs> there was Penn Hills. I think there was North Hills too around Pittsburgh. He also says, despite the fact that I'm just drinking Diet Mountain Dew this evening, I'm still enjoying the show, guys. <laughs> I'm glad you are, Bum. But here's the thing: that Diet Mountain Dew. That's on you. <laughs> uh, Billy, the last time we have is Billy says he will pick up Bourbon County tomorrow. Cheers. That's crazy that they're rele- releasing it tomorrow. You can get it tomorrow because Black Friday was pretty much it. I'm not here. It was done. No, I mean, I got mine. Whatever I got it the other day. I mean, like I said, it was at our, our Kroger local grocery store right there. Yeah, that's cool. Just- Live in fantasy land over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one place here that's planning to raffle it off. I'm like, why are you raffling off? You can go to these other places and get it. But I would like to try the variants of it. Yeah. Had the- Those are harder to find for sure. Yeah. There was no variants released in New York aside from the barley wine, which isn't a variant. It's the barley wine. So we had the regular and the barley wine. But I know there were a bunch of other states, I think like Massachusetts got like the one of the reserves or whatever it was. Oh, the proprietors is only the Chicago area, um, but everything else gets released in distribution areas. I, I whoever sells the most, I guess. I don't I don't know how it works exactly, but I know around here, most places had the stout and some had the barley wine. And that's it. I got one of each, and I'm like, that's cool. I'm happy. I had the barley wine. Yeah. I had- Oh, that was outstanding. Oh, my God. The barley wines, my jam, like that, because I'm like, Rod, I love English style barley wines, and I like that better than the stout, but not much better. They're all awesome to me, but it's just a little bit, a little bit. You know, the, whole, the whole jumping around for people to try to find them brings up an interesting thing, too, because when you're dealing with a corporation, your major goal is your shareholders. So mm-hmm. you want to do as much as you can to raise stuff for shareholders. So you yeah. take an example like Bourbon County and Goose Island, you would think if they're trying to raise as much for shareholders, they would be blasting out as much as possible to different places. Well, no, they're letting Bourbon County still go through their regular distribution channels. Well, here's don't the make thing, it all part of the demand. Here's the thing. This is what I uh, – I'm friends with one of the manager of the bottle shop, and we got to talking about Bourbon County. What happens with Bourbon County, and, and I don't know if this is different outside of western New York or I guess the state of New York in general, they send – more Bourbon County and I guess more variations, so more of the variants to stores who sell more Goose Island products, period. So places who don't sell Goose Island well as a whole throughout the year, they get less inventory of Bourbon County and probably won't see any variants as opposed to a place who just sells a ton of Goose Island. So they actually, I think that's cool. They kind of reward the stores that sell more of their product throughout the year. But if you have a local place that says, 
you know, we have all the best beers or whatever, and they carry Goose Island, and no one's walking in and being like, yo, give me that case of Honker's Ale on the reg, because they're not going to do that. They're going to go to probably someplace cheaper or, you know, whatever. They're going to pick it up randomly at a grocery store or a, um, you know, like a Sam's Club or whatever, right, a, a Costco. Yeah. Um, that's why you see a lot of these grocery stores, like Kroger, a Wegmans here in, in Western New York, mm -hmm. Durban County, because they sell a lot of Goose Island product. So right. they will get cases upon cases of it where your local bottle shop who doesn't go through Goose Island, they might get a couple cases and that's it. Well, or maybe even one and that's it. Yeah, not a lot. Which is cool. Like I said, it's cool. But I mean, you know. I mean, like you said, shareholder, you want to sell all of your product. You want to sell right. as much of you. That's how you make money. So it's like reward the, the the places of business that is selling your product more than the other ones. I guess that's how it should work, I think. Yeah. Supply and demand. Yep, yep. Now, I don't know Founders does that. Founders probably doesn't do that. Founders, <laughs> Founders is going to send like six bottles of CBS yeah. to each one. Everybody's like, like, get him breakfast out. Canadian. Yeah, let me see those Instagram posts where someone gets shanked in the leg with a piece of wood. Because they're fighting for CBS. <laughs> yeah, you guys have to remind me later to see the hoppy floppy Canadian breakfast style. She already had one, her post on Instagram. Oh, boy. You don't have to remind us much about hoppy floppy there. <laughs> <laughs> but any more comments out there? Uh, just one more from Craig uh, with a hashtag. So, uh, I don't want to read it, but since it's my quote, I'll read it. He says, hashtag, that's on you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Craig. <laughs> you <mother -out. laughs> dilly, dilly. That's pretty good, Craig. Pretty good. Craig, dilly, dilly. Craig you should have you joined us. So we, we, we probably would have let, maybe let you in. Uh, but I know you can get Sierra Nevada, so. <laughs> Craig's always welcome. Craig's kind of, he's sleep half the time, though, at this point almost, and so. I saw Peter mention too. He was he actually posted in the uh, beer tubers hangout of the UK guys that you and I are in, Rod. That uh, he showed the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale was like a new new special model or whatever. I don't know if that's going to be something that the states get, but it was like a new label or it looked like a baby like a um, Christmassy label. So it's kind of interesting. Very interesting. So you want to roll with this Sierra Nevada? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> I just. Just to be forewarned, I did no prep work because I'm a piece of crap. No, I just, it was a blog week. And uh, actually, I don't want to say that I didn't remember the show, but I did. And it was yesterday. And I was busy. And I'm like, all right. I know it's not like I sit here for three hours, do prep work, but it's like, it, it, you know, maybe like 15 minutes to kind of get the background. So this is going to be a sweet, sweet read from the Wikipedia website for Sierra Nevada. So let's hope they're like at least like 90% right. <laughs> We'll see. Um, I'm also going to use, I mean, I'm going to use their website for like the, you know, when we talk about their beers, the year round and seasonals, because uh, I would hope it's accurate. I mean, Sierra Nevada, they, they're not a macro brewery anymore, really. The Little Brewer Association says. Sierra Nevada? Um, no, no, I know they are. They technically are, but they're not. Um, you know, it all depends <laughs> on arbitrary numbers there, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So everybody out there is pretty much familiar with Sierra Nevada, right? I mean, they have been uh, one of the kings of craft beer in the United States for a long time. They were founded in 1979, so that's older than me. Not quite older than Rod, Todd, or Eric, though. Am I right? You're right. Yeah, I'm right. These guys have been... Who's the these millennial guys, now? Yeah, that's, yeah, a, these guys, that's a shot right there, I tell you. No, no I just wanted to specify. <laughs> I just wanted to specify these guys have been drinking Sierra Nevada since they were four. Yeah. So I wanted to say, I don't leave a market. Yeah. They weren't drinking milk; they were drinking pale ale. Yes. Uh, they were founded by Ken Grossman and uh, Paul Camuzzi. Uh, they had a home brew hobby, like so many people do nowadays. But back then, that was kind of I think the home brewing um, rules were relaxed in the seventies, where you could actually home brew again. So uh, that was their hobby in uh, Chico, California. Um, and they ended up starting the brewery and the name of the brewery was because of, um, I think it was Grossman's love of hiking in the Sierra Nevada mountains. So nothing special, no hidden meaning, just he liked the Sierra Nevada mountains and, and hiking. So that's what he did. Uh, they got $50,000 in loans from friends and family. They, uh, rented a 3000 square foot warehouse and they kind of just, you know, pieced together a bunch of different equipment to actually start the brewery. 
Um, later on, they were able to acquire uh, secondhand copper uh, brew kettles from Germany uh, before they actually eventually moved into their larger uh, facility in 1989. The first batch they ever brewed, not going to surprise anyone, was their Pale Ale. And it was in November of 1980, which is three months after I was born. Just, just to clarify. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then the, uh, <laughs> a sneaky, the, a sneaky right right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then the following year, uh, they actually introduced their celebration IP, which Todd and I are drinking tonight. Uh, which they have continued as a winter seasonal release up until this year. And I, I'd imagine going forward uh, in their first year, they sold 950 us beer barrels, which is not a lot, but in the second year, they doubled that. Uh, the first employee was Steve Harrison, who they put in charge of marketing and sales. And the head brewer is to this day, I believe Steve Dressler. He has run with the brewery since 1983 when its output was 25 to 30 barrels per week. Um, they had some issues with financial market problem in the 80s that, whatever, no big deal. Um, in 1987, they distributed, started distributing to seven states, and their production had reached 12,000 U.S. beer barrels, uh, and causing the company to pursue building a new brewery. And then in 1988, they moved into a 100-barrel brew house with four open fermenters and 11 200 U.S. beer barrels uh, secondary fermenters. Um, a year later, they opened up their Sierra Nevada tap room and restaurant. Uh, which serves lunch and dinner and includes a gift shop. And then in 2000, they opened the big room, a live music venue location inside the various facilities. And they focus on a variety of acts, country, bluegrass, rock, all, all that stuff. Uh, Camusi retired in 1998 and sold the rest of his shares to Grossman. Uh, uh, the brewery, this is going back six years, but they employed about 450 people in 2011. I don't know what the current data is because this is Wikipedia. It's probably wrong anyway. Uh, in, in January of 2012, uh, they announced they would be building a second brewing facility with an attached restaurant in Mills River, North Carolina. Um, what's up? Yeah, North Kakalaka. It's called North Kakalaka. North Kakalaka. Um, the LED Platinum Certified Building opened in early 2014 on a forested track adjacent to Asheville Regional Airport, reusing the cut down trees as lumber, both in the building and the rainwire, uh, rainwater cisterns that flush the toilets. So that's pretty cool. You know, uh, they, awesome. and, yeah, it's, I mean, that's, that's making use of everything, right? Making sure everything is not being wasted. In 2013, uh, the company opened the Torpedo Room in Berkeley, California, which was the first tasting room outside of Chico. And then uh, the last little nugget of information that Wikipedia has for like their history is something we've talked about before. It says, in January 2017, Sierra Nevada uh, issued a voluntary recall of a certain 12-ounce bottles of different beers in 36 states due to manufacturing defects that had possibly introduced chip pieces of glass into the bottle, which I think we all kind of remember when that was uh, news. You guys remember that earlier this year? Yeah. yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. I, I, I hope no one actually... Uh, Drank any glass. That would have been a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, they actually... could have been a good thing because you could have been a stakeholder of Sierra Nevada. Yeah, that's a, it's cool. Just a few <laughs> scars on the esophagus. No big deal. Um, they are. They have a track record of being one of the most environmental friendly um, businesses. They actually won the Green Business of the Year Award for 2012. Uh, and, you know, like we're talking about, like I mentioned about their um, – Asheville location about reusing the trees. And I mean, they are efficient and uh, they make sure that they don't waste anything, which, which is great to great to uh, know because I wish more breweries were like that. And you see a lot of local breweries where they'll, they'll send the, the used grain, spent grains to like right. local farms and stuff. I mean, that's one thing craft beer has, I think one up on a lot of other uh, businesses is that they do reuse a lot of uh, the ingredients and, and stuff. They don't let stuff go to waste. So you know, kudos to Sierra Nevada and, and, and most most breweries who do that. Pretty solid. Um, that pretty much does it for like their history and whatever. I mean, not too much going on. They are, you know, one of the grandfathers when it comes to craft beer. I mean, we all know and love and respect Sierra Nevada until they're no longer a craft brewery. Then we hate them. Um, <laughs> year year round. Rule sage, unless the rules. <laughs> 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 Year-round beers. So, uh, if you guys heard this, but Pale Ale for them is, I guess, a year-round beer. I yeah. guess it gets, uh, whatever. Yeah, uh, it's, 
Torpedo, I think. Yeah, too, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. Uh, the Palel, uh, their sidecar orange Palel is now a year round, according to their website. Not a fan. I wasn't a person. fan of that one as much. No, it was. Uh, never... I'll take the. I want the full car, not the sidecar. Just give me the full car. Yeah, just don't, just give me the pallet. We're good. <laughs> like the sidecar um, for the motorcycle. Nobody wants to ride in that. <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to laugh at the person next to you that's in there as you're driving the actual motorcycle. Um, uh, Torpedo Extra IPA is another. I mean, it's. I say it's a classic. I think it was released in '09, but it's one of those beers that, like, yeah, I think if you've had Sierra Nevada, you probably have had Torpedo at some point yeah. in your life. Todd's drinking it. Eric was drinking it earlier. Maybe he's actually into it now. I mean, it's it's one of the first uh, extra IPAs or you know bigger IPAs. It's not a double, six point seven, but like it's one of those. Oh my god, there's tons of stuff going on in it. Uh, is also the first beer in my life when I was an ignorant craft beer drinker, as I referred to earlier. And myself, I was that, which I thought it just tasted like pure marijuana, marijuana, not marijuana, Mar marijuana, marijuana. Um, I, I, I remember, I remember drinking and just going, "Oh my god, this smells like weed!" <laughs> like I don't know what I'm doing, and I taste. It, I'm like, "Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't taste like weed. It totally <laughs> smelled like it." Then you learn what dank meant. Oh it yeah, is dank. I was like, "This is so dank!" <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it smells like those nugs. No, uh, so another year-round beer for them, which I've had, and again, it much like that side card, I don't feel is a per and this is person personal. I don't know if you guys hear what I meant. Tropical torpedo. Have you guys tried that? Tropical Torpedo. I can't remember if I tried that one or not. Uh, I have to take my thing. I haven't tried. What do you think, Todd? Do you like it? Eh, it it's okay. I mean, it's, it's not, all I have had. It's, it's not great. But it's, it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's, it's not just, my favorite of theirs. It's just like you would pick Torpedo every day over it. Like at that, yeah. You know, it's just like if you have them side by side, I would be like, I'd take Torpedo every every day of the week. I would agree with that. Five on that one. What'd you get? I gave it a two point seven five on untap. Yeah, Rod hated it, barely passed it. That's all I need to know. <laughs> that was not a B plus beer for me. <laughs> no, it was like freaking super minus. But if uh, Greg from Greg's beer review with baby kind of like nothing to roll, you say it paired with some age monitor <laughs> moderary jet cheese, baby. Some Asiago cheese. Think like, cheese. Trying to keep it together there. <laughs> a little bit of key lime pine kiwi truffle, baby. All right, I'm good. Uh, Hop Hunter IPA is also a year-round beer. Uh, that was with the uh, – where they did the, uh, the the steam distilling of the wet hops and made a big deal about it and turned out like, the beer I was – I like Hop Hunter. I would say it turns out the beer was good, but I wasn't like, oh, my God, these were totally steam distilled. It's like I they were good. It was a good beer. <laughs> But uh, I think I think they kind of made more of uh, uh, you know more out of the process than what really needed to be. But it, it was a good IPA, I felt as well, Rod. I agree with that. Um, their Nooner Pilsner, which I feel is a very solid Pilsner, if you very like the style. Solid. Yeah, that's a nice little lawnmower beer in the summertime. For sure. Yeah, uh, yeah that's a good I, one. I think they, much like Sierra Nevada does with like classic takes on styles. I feel they did that one really well. Like that was appropriate for the style. They didn't. They didn't go crazy. They're like, okay, we're gonna release the pills and then we're gonna double dry hop it with citrus, mosaic, and galaxy. It's like that's no longer a pills at all. Not even a little bit. Um, Otravez, which is their goza uh, that is brewed with um, pickly prayer cactus. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually like that quite a bit. I think that's a really good goza. Uh, if for for what it is, if you it's a little sweeter for the style, but it's. It's like one of those summer beers, right? Where you're like, it's just super refreshing. Yeah. I think it's a solid Goza, but I've had better. Oh, yeah, for sure. I like I said, I think it's a little bit sweeter, which yeah. I, I feel like it's, if you're trying to get into sours, I think Gozas and Berliner Weisses are already kind of a good starting place because some of them are more tart than sour. Um, but if you get like one that's actually made with a real fruit that has some sweetness behind it, I it's good entry level. Uh, their Keller Vice, which again, much like the the Pilsner, I feel is a really well made uh, wheat beer. It's it's just it's the Bavarian style is so many U.S. breweries, so many North American breweries just don't do them well, and I feel that's a very good representation of the style. It's not going to beat some of the authentic ones, but it's still good. I do. Uh, their Porter, another classic. I'm sure we've all had the Porter, maybe not Eric, because I, I don't know. I have good there's some better ones baby like the edmund fitzgerald baby or maybe the founders but is it as good as the founders 
No, no I, I don't think so anyway. Then again, I love Founders Porter, so. It's subjective. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up a 3.5 on, on tap. 3.5, so there you go. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's around there, maybe 3.5, 3.75. Good. When you drink like thousands and thousands of beers, it's hard to remember every one. That's, you know, when people do the whole, uh, tap, I'm like, I'm tapped. Don't get me wrong. I like seeing what other people are drinking and interacting and talking back and forth. But like, if it does anything for me, it just allows me to kind of quickly remember what I drank at some point, what I gave the beer, what I thought about the beer. Because once you start getting into thousands and thousands of beers, it's like, what'd you think about this? I drank it. I think it was good. I don't know. Hang on. Let me bust out on tap. Oh, yeah. It's a 3.5 and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's a great tool. Great tool. I'm going from the Prano to the Narwhal now. Do I need to go get some pickles? Yeah, you got clean, clean the palate. <laughs> no, you gotta you gotta clean you gotta cleanse it, not cleanse it. But if you wanna cleanse it, dill pickles. <laughs> not seven of them. And last but not least on their year round is their stout. Uh which I've had like six, seven years ago. I just one I should probably revisit. But I don't even though it's a year round beer, I can't remember seeing the Sierra Nevada stout just randomly on shelves here. The only time I've seen it more recently has been usually parts of other packs. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe that's what it is too. Now they do have a coffee stout though. I've had that before, and that's really good. Yeah, that's in their. I think like one of their packs. Uh, like, well, I think it might be in their winter pack, so it should be coming out around now. Yeah, actually, that's the next thing is the packs. We got the uh, here's here's the packs that they have. Please. Oh, the packs. They have the four way IPA, which is a German style IPA, a peach IPA, a black IPA, and then you know doing what Samuel Adams is known to do. Let's throw the torpedo in there for you too. Because you never had the torpedo. It's like, you know, oh, Sam Adams put a Boston <laughs> lager on <and> everything. <laughs> it's, good. it's like Sam Adams with, yeah, the Boston lager or yeah. like the Magic Hat. Let's throw in the number nine. You never had the number nine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is Samuel Adams Winter Classics. Here's three winter lagers that you can buy in six packs by itself, 12 packs, kegs on uh, draft everywhere. But, you know, take three of them in the mix pack because you can't have it. Just <laughs> yeah. Sam Adams. I don't need the base edition. I've had that. Yeah. Yep. Um, they have a party pack, which is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, it comes with the Pale Ale, the Ultra Vez, a Hoppy Lager, and a River Ride Rye IPA. I guess it's for parties. You got the Pale Ale for the people who are like, yeah, I kind of like craft beer. The Ultra Vez for those more bold people. And then the Hoppy Lager and River Ride IPA for the hopheads. It's all right. I've had the Rye IPA before. That was good. Yeah, yeah, I've had that too um, in the past. It has a new logo, so it's kind of interesting. Their Fresh Hop Pack, which I've actually seen, and I thought it was cool because it was all cans. It was their Fresh Hop IPA, their Fresh Hop Double IPA, the Fresh Hop Session IPA, and then Celebration in cans. Uh, that's pretty cool. I would like to try Celebration in cans. Good times. What are you saying, Eric? Eric? I said, oh, did you see Celebration in cans? Yeah, yeah. That's I've never seen it in cans, so. That's pretty cool. I have to buy bottles, never in cans. Yeah, I I think it's probably exclusive to that pack, so maybe I'll have to give that one a go. I don't know. Uh, I've never had the fresh hop double single or session because I get again it's probably exclusive to that pack. So uh, sounds pretty interesting. And the last one is the one you were mentioning, the snow pack mix pack, which comes with pale ale, their coffee stout, which is a cold brewed coffee stout, their winter tide ale, which is an ale brewed with spices, and then this one, which I. Actually saw a couple of my buddies drinking out on tapped, and it looked like straight up New England style IPA. It was their Holiday Haze IPA. Ooh, so, I've heard of that one. That, I might have to get that. That actually sounds like a very interesting pack outside of the Pale Ale, and I haven't had Pale in a while, so I'll drink those. <laughs> Again, I don't need the Pale Ale. <laughs> no, I don't need the Pale Ale. <laughs> yeah, don't need the Pale Ale. <laughs> but like, I'll drink the Pale Ale if you're giving me a Boston Lager. I don't know. We might have to fight. Um, <laughs> Then for their seasonals, uh, I don't – does it mention which season this is? I guess we'll just figure it out as we go because one's called Summerfest, one is Oktoberfest, and one's Celebration. So this is the spring one, and this is their Beer Camp Golden IPA. Oh, I like is, that one. That's pretty good. I have not had that. It was solid, huh? Yeah, it's really solid. Hmm. I have not had that one either. Baby – no, oh, I know who's had it, baby. And if he has, he had it. You can buy that individually. Usually, I buy it individual bottles. I can get that one. He paired it with more of your sharp cheeses, baby, like your sharp goat cheese. That's what it says, sharp goat cheese. To have. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of lemon, so baby, baby, oh, grilled fish, black and chicken, baby. <laughs> All right. 
Oh, Gorgonzola. <laughs> some of your more pungent cheese, like your Gorgonzola, or your blue cheeses, or your Limburger. Um, summer Fest is their summer crisp lager, which. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. It's, it's all right, bro. Uh, their Oktoberfest, which each year they do a collaboration with a different brewery. And uh, I really like this past year's. Last year's I wasn't a huge fan of, and the year before I really liked. So uh, I would, if you're into Oktoberfest, always keep an eye on Sierra Nevadas because, like I said, they collab every year with a different German brewer. And uh, it's, always, it's always unique at the very least. Might not be good, but it's cool to try. Um, and then Celebration IPA, which we've already talked about tonight, which is a classic. And then their uh, high, I think it's high altitude series, which is one classic that I don't think any of us had tonight, which is their Bigfoot. Oh, yeah. That's a classic. It's a classic. Classic American style barley wine. Ages extremely well. Or as I, call, as I call it, the Paul. Yeah, baby. You know what the food pairing is when it comes to cheese, baby? I shit you not. It says right on the site right here. It says pungent blue cheese. Please don't do that when I'm drinking a beer. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I, mean, it's, 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 it's also, I really don't want to spit narwhal. Out. <laughs> it doesn't even say blue cheese. It says pungent blue cheese, just to specify. Don't yeah, be bringing that weak blue baby. cheese. Yeah, don't be bringing in that bah, blue cheese, baby. <laughs> um, the other one is their Optimum Triple IPA, which I've had multiple times and I enjoy it. But it's a, it's a big beer. It's very big. If I don't get it relatively fresh, it kind of has like those barley wine vibes to it because the, the oh. malt starts kicking in and the hops start dying down a little bit. It's still good though. It's like, if you've never had it, try it. Let me write away. Cause I always tell, I, I tell Eric this before, like on some of these styles, you don't want to, you don't want to drink them cold. If you were drinking a narwhal cold, you were really screwing it up. This baby is so nice. I let this baby warm up out of the fridge for about 35 minutes or so. And it is so freaking smooth. It's smooth. That's what it's it is. smooth, smooth. baby. Uh, Brad, I like it cold and warm, both. Yo, he wants it about 32.2 degrees and then like 70. Oh, you want this baby around 50, 55. Paul wants it about 108 or so, give or take. Just off of a boil. <laughs> just off of a boil. Just off of a boil. Just, just a slight boil. Shy of boiling. But the, nor the Norwal is, is, is pretty, and excuse my language, it is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah it is. Good segue, boys, because Narwhal's the last in the high altitude series. So there you go. Uh, Again, one of those one of those beers that like you could sit here and be like, that's totally classic. They've been brewing that for twenty years. Here's the sad reality: they totally haven't. They've been brewing it for like five. I think 2012 was like the first time they brewed it. But they do a bunch of variations on it too, like a bunch of barrel aged. Uh, they do a coconut, and I believe cacao one that I'm kind of interested in. Um, as far as the other beers on here, the old, the last five they have is uh, their their specialty series. Uh, their Ovilla Abbey White, which I think they used to do um, a white. I think they did a, a double and something else. They did one with like raisins or plums. I don't see it on here. I don't know if they brew it anymore. They do the Northern Hemisphere Harvest Wet I uh, Wet Hop IPA. I've had those before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are those are always pretty tasty. Uh, they do their Estate Ale, which I've never had before. Estate Ale. I don't think I've seen mm -hmm. that. No nope. one either. It says from the sun drenched fields of California's North Valley comes our estate ale. Uh, I, I guess it's, it kind of sounds like it's more of like a hop forward, maybe pale ale, 6.7. I don't know. They don't specify on here what the actual style is, but I guess it's just with uh, state grown hops, uh, Chinook and Cascade. Uh, they also have the old Chico brand Crystal Wheat, which I've never even heard of until right now it's a filtered wheat beer so i'm not on board oh. uh they use only crystal hops hence the name and then hey trip in the woods barrel age cocoa coconut narwhal is That's uh, supposed to be really good the trip in yeah. the woods. Oh, <laughs> eric eric need to sell down because coconut's the greatest thing ever made in this world now. Um, yeah, I wanted to try it, but the, 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 with Sierra Nevada, like those show up, they're like twenty dollars, and I'm like, ah, it's Sierra Nevada. I don't know. Like I can't, I can't pay twenty for that. I just can't. I'll pay two. I'll pay like twenty nine for CBS. <laughs> All day, every day, every day. 
Uh, hey. That's pretty much it, though, for as far as history and beers and everything goes. I'll read comments, and then we'll go into our own little history with them, and then, I guess, wrap up the, the segment. Does this um, mean about the double latte? No. It, 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 those are the only sp- – that was all on, on their website. If anybody knows where I can find that, that'd be really good if they still make it. I sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, Bum says, I want to hear Dusty Rhodes say dilly dilly. <laughs> <laughs> what is the whole dilly dilly everywhere because of that? Uh, it's a Budweiser commercial, right? <laughs> Uh, Craig from Ken Beer Review says, Pal and Torpedo, easy to get in the UK. Well, you could you could join us, Craig, but, uh, you know, she's lazy. I don't know. I'm going to tell you. Um, he, also, he also can do the delay. says, also Hop Hunter in cans here as well as Nooner. Um, I've had Nooner in cans. Yeah. No. But never been I, in a can for a Nooner. <laughs> 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 Bum says Sierra Nevada's, or as Paul says, I'm saying it's Nevada or Nevada. Either way you want to say it, Paul. It's like pecan and pecan. It's like however you want to say it, Paul. Except for caramel and caramel. Caramel's wrong. Caramel. Caramel. Wrong. Caramel. Car- caramel, bros. If that A is in there, you got to go caramel. Yeah, caramel, caramel. caramel. Same thing. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It's like it's like macro and micro. Doesn't matter, it's bros. <laughs> it's so subjective. <laughs> Sierra, so he says Sierra Nevada's uh, Porter and Stout have become virtually forgotten over the years in the wake of all their dozens of new releases. I remember when there was just Palo Alto Porter Stout, and that was all. Yeah, I mean, even when I got back into craft eight, nine years ago, uh, it, there weren't many. It was like Palo Alto, Torpedo, uh, the Porter, the Stout, and then like whatever seasonal. There's like five total beers. Now it's like five new beers from them are being released every month. So when you kind of look at it, almost like a Sam Adams now with some of their releases. When you go through their list of stuff they've made, yeah, I would agree with that. Craig says Dilly Dilly Pickles. I see what he did there. <laughs> see what he did. There. <laughs> oh, that UK humor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so dry. No, um, Paul says Sam Adams. Joe, I think you mean Sierra Nevada. Uh, did I say Sam Adams says Sierra Nevada? Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I wasn't prepared at all, Paul. So I'm just making shit up as we go. Um, he says I don't think Sam Adams makes a torpedo. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Either way, it's not craft. Oh, it is. Okay. Um, then he says four way in your mouth. You don't have to read every comment. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was very appropriate. Yeah. Shout out to Paul. So classy. He says, so so hazy. Talking about the, the hazy uh, IPA they have. So hazy, you'll need Rudolph's nose to see through it. That's, a, <laughs> okay. that's, that's almost dad joke territory, Paul. We're going to need to settle down. Um, I know bumps, bad jokes, so we got to go bad jokes. <laughs> yeah, we got that. <laughs> we put, we put I've the had box. a standing by. <laughs> B- Bum says, I miss your... Uh, Tumblr Autumn Brown Ale, which I, rem- oh, I remember that one. Too, yeah, He says it was available on its own for a few years, then reduced to a spot in the fall variety pack most recently in 15 or 16, I believe. I think 15 was the last year they did it, because it, it didn't come out, I don't think, last year. Certainly does not coming out this year. Uh, Paul says, did someone say Bigfoot? Yes, we don't, Paul. You're a Sasquatch. <laughs> and then he said... <laughs> oh, <we> said <laughs> then, 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 then Paul says, Rod almost spilled or spit narwhal everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> he said that he didn't. He didn't mind the uh, the tumbler brown ale. Uh, that uh, speaking to bomb, and then he says he prefers his beers about 165 degrees Fahrenheit, which yeah. it's still not boiling though, right? So no, it's, I mean he. Listen, I I may have <clears throat> overstated how warm or hot he likes his beers. It's near boiling. He doesn't. I mean he's got to be able to drink. It's like a nice cup of coffee. Can't be boiling. Just like. You know, a little bit before boiling. That's kind of like he likes every beer he drinks, right? I like the meat near near raw, but not. Joe, Joe, what's up? Dilly dilly. Nah, you <laughs> motherfucker. Um, Chris from on the tent says hi, guys. Chris thought this was. Happening. Yeah, he says thought this wasn't on tonight. That makes two of us. Um, he says drinking a flying monkey's juicy AIDS. I believe you meant juicy ass, but close. <laughs> Ju- juicy ass IPA, meh. He says meh. Meh. Playing that way. <laughs> you meant juicy ass. That's, that's not him. Uh, Paul said he did have the estate L, so one of the few guys that I know that apparently has had it. 
Um, he says it's a lesser version of a fresh hopped ale. Him and Craig are doing man love things. Um, and then Gabriel comes back and says, are you guys drunk now? No. I no. wish we were. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, we're just we're just getting we're just actually. I mean, this one's only ten point two, so yeah. it's not it's no big deal. A little bottle, no big deal. Um, so that's all for comments aside from Craig and Chris and uh, Paul having a lot of fun over there. Uh, so yeah, to finish up the segment, I guess go to each person. We'll start with Eric. Eric, your first experience with Sierra Nevada. What was your first impressions of the brewery? Uh, it was a, the Norwalk. The base beer. Ooh, nice. I thought that was very, very good. I thought it was very malty, very charry, you know, um, chocolatey, all that sort of stuff. I thought it was very good. And I and actually Thomas Metal 75 actually said, hey, why don't you try the pale ale? So I went ahead and tried the pale ale. I, th I thought that was very, very good. And it kind of, I said, what, what's that? And it's a torpedo. I tried the torpedo. That was very good. So I've had very good experiences with uh, with uh, Sierra Nevada. Now some of their their trip in the woods series is eh, I, I, it's a love hate. I think with those to me, I didn't I didn't think they were all that great. I mean, I, I, I guess as to me it was it, it was a good and I, and I and I don't mean to slam Sierra Nevada at all, but it was a good effort. But to me, I didn't think it was up to par. I guess is how I would put it, but overall, Sierra Nevada is like, like all the other breweries that we've had. They're solid. Usually, going to get a good product from them, but they're but like with every brewery, every brewery, you're going to have hit and misses. So I'm just kind of going to leave it there, more or less. I think you just did a Ricky Bobby with all due respect. Yeah, uh, basically, Sierra Nevada. <laughs> I said with all due respect. <laughs> well, I didn't. Uh, you're Nevada, Ken Grossman, if you're out there, uh, you're tripping the wood series, it's bullshit. It sucks. You heard it first here from Eric Lines fan. He hates it. He hates you. He hates your entire well, company. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I get what you're saying, too. Plus, the price point on those beers are very, <clears throat> very high. Price point is a big factor, yes. Yeah. I mean, the, all those beers that I had was like $20 plus. Dollars. I'm like, and I tried them, and I'm like, it's not worth the twenty dollars. It's really not. And I there's a lot. You got that trip in the woods, yeah. You weren't very as pleased with it. He was yeah, extremely I, pissed. I mean, granted, they were. They were. I, I think they were trying to go outside the box a little bit, but in the end, it was. It didn't really come together. What what they're trying to do is a lot of these breweries are doing, which is throw them in barrels. Uh, you know, put adjuncts in and just see what happens for the most part. And you know, Narwhal is a great imperial stout, but like. I've oh, always just, been just, awesome. Just the base is awesome. Yeah. And, and I've been of the opinion for a long time that like most amazing stouts out there that are barrel aged, usually the, the base beer was brewed to go into those barrels. So they, it, it holds up to those barrels. It accentuates the barrels flavors. So when you have a great beer like Narwhal, I guess your assumption is I throw it in this barrel. It's going to be awesome. If you didn't brew it specifically to go in that barrel, you might be disappointed more often than not. Yeah. So I, I, you have, it's it's like trial and error for them. I'm sure there's some trip of the wood trip in the woods that are amazing, and some that just don't work. And that's yeah. I've I had the ginger and I had the currants one, and those two were uh, yeah, yeah. That was me. that was the Eric. You're you're a dumbass. They were the most amazing things I've ever had. But to me, it the, was kind of. Billy the ginger one was that the Bigfoot one? The ginger was the Bigfoot yeah. one, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that. I've had passes. Like, I guess it'd be totally too much ginger, too much ginger. I don't know if there is. But it, I just it didn't have too much ginger in it. It did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's it's tough. Um, people who are watching, I guess your first experiences. If you want to put them down, we'll read them when we're done. Uh, just because to include you, I don't want to forget about you guys. Even though it's just Craig, Paul, and uh, well, Bum's awesome. The rest of the guys. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Kid, everybody, truly appreciate the comments. But if you guys want to throw some down, I will read it for the whole world, all like three people out there to see right now. Um, so, Rod, you're, you're next. First impressions of the brewery. First beer you ever had, for, and, and, and overall impressions of the brewery. I think the I think the first beer I actually had for them was probably Torpedo, if I remember correctly. And it was a it was a pleasant experience. I mean, it was a nice IPA, nice hoppiness, nice bitterness to it. 
had a good little feel. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what the whole cone technology is because they had that <laughs> on the label. So we didn't really talk about that too much, but apparently only Sierra Nevada has the cone. Um, but no, it was solid and tried their other beers. Um, overall, as a brewery, they're pretty decent. I mean, I think there's some hit and misses with them, as Eric mentioned as well. Some of yeah. theirs has not knocked me back. Sidecar, like I said, was not a great beer to me. It was average enough, but it didn't really push it. The Tropical Torpedo didn't really push it that much. Kind of like a conservative play, you know, kind of just like a layup type play. But some of their other beers, the Celebration is really good. Narwhal is pretty good. Um, I think if I had to look at them across a spectrum of how we we'll rate them on a five-point scale, for me with Sierra Nevada, I'd probably put them at a solid four. I think they mm-hmm. always deliver overall. They deliver. They're going to have a head, few. Bro. They're going to have a few. They haven't had a lot. They've had one or two that might be off, but overall, they're kind of like, you know, a Pete Rose steady hitter type brewery. So you can't really complain. Pete Rose didn't always get on base, so he still let it hit. And he didn't always gamble, but he did, and then he's not in the Hall of Famer. Yeah. (laughs) They gamble. They gamble sometimes. They gambled on Torpedo. They gambled on Sidecar. They crapped out for me on those. (laughs) <laughs> they cr- they crack it. Going. We'll keep it going all night, people. We'll keep it going all night. <laughs> all night, baby. Oh. God, baby. All I gotta say to you, Todd, is the dilly dilly. Okay, well, okay. So dilly, first dilly. beer you ever had, Todd. First beer you ever had. Overall impressions of the brewery. We'll go back to you, Eric. After this, I guess give your score because Roger's like, I'm giving my score, and I'm like, that's cool. You give you you dictate how we run this show because it is your show. <laughs> We are giving ratings, so if you want to give it out of five, Todd, you do that as well. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, look, looking back at my untapped, it looks like the first one that I actually checked in was the Tumblr Autumn Brown Ale. Um, but since then, you know, Celebration's been kind of uh, – oh, this is the first one I've had in a couple of years, but that was kind of a go-to uh, as far as their beers. Obviously, the Pale Ale um, I had quite a bit of. I'm a big fan of the Narwhal. I do like that one, and – the, the Bigfoot, I like the Bigfoot for barley wine. Now, I'm kind of like the other guys. They are, they do kind of miss on some um, across America series that comes out as way overpriced, and it's not really worth from what my experience oh. of it. Ooh, ooh. We got to touch on that. I forgot about that one, baby. All right, man. It's been a couple of decent ones out of it, but for what it. For overall, for what they want to charge for it, I don't think it's worth it. Um, but for the most part, I think they're solid. They do most of everything, you know. Not, and they, you know, they do go out of the box and try try some different things, and like everything else, is you get some that work and some that don't. I also like. I'm also a big fan of their Olivia beers, which are the the Belgium. Mm-hmm. I have Ovi- oh, Ovila. Ovila. Or, oh, oh, yeah. Ovila. yeah. <laughs> he said Olivia, and I'm like, yeah, me too. What? What beers are these? <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Munn. Is that what you were saying? Olivia Munn. Yeah, Olivia Munn. Who's not a fan? Yeah. What, what, so what's your rating out of five, then? What do you, I mean, you seem to dig them. Was you, would you put it around a four, like uh, Rod? Yeah, and then the 375 to four range. Yeah, see, I almost want to go to the you know, I think they're also one of those you go to the restaurants or whatnot, and, and they've got them on tap. And mm-hmm. Towards that, and you're, you're going to be just fine. And yeah, no take backs, Rod. You're at a four. Let's try to. Yeah, but then Todd brought in the whole cross America, and I was like, damn it, I forgot about that. Yeah, it was like, is that, is that your final answer? Is that Listen, is yeah, that your final not, answer? I mean, like I said, they're still swinging away. Maybe not, maybe a Pete Rose, maybe more of a Tony Gwynn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did the uh, Beer Camp Across America not work for you either? Yeah, um, it's uh, hang on. Down. I think it's we're, overpriced, but yeah, we're gonna get right into that right after yeah, I yeah. say my oh. three words. We're gonna bring it right into that because it'd oh, be a like good. Eric, you let Eric give his score. Well, fair, yeah, Eric, what's your score? What's your score out of four or out of five? Not out of four. I, please, not out of four. Out of four. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the whole point. Yeah, we're making it way too difficult at that point. I would say about a three point seven. I think they have some solid beers, but like like what Rod said, me and Rod kind of agree with. They have a little bit of misses too, but mm-hmm. like if you go to a brewery and you see the torpedo or the pale ale on tap, it's probably a good. <laughs> it, it's a good idea if you order those because you're going to like them more or less. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I get about know. seven, which would be about EB plus right. Te- yeah. Teetering on Let's that. not confuse the viewers and bring in letter grades. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
the viewers are drinking. That's what Bob Bob's thinking. Yeah, at three seven the viewers are probably drinking. At three seven five would be like, uh, yeah, like a, a B high B. Um, so three seven five from Eric, four from Rod, three seven five from Todd. I'm it, my first beer I ever had from them was actually Torpedo. I talked about smelling like marijuana. It didn't taste like it, but still wasn't a fan of it because it was one of the first IPs I've ever had. But then the second beer I ever had from them was actually uh, not the pale ale. What the hell did I have? The barley wine. I've had Bigfoot after that because it sounded cool. And uh, again, at back then, it was kind of hop forward. I, I actually came to enjoy both those beers immensely over the years once my palate adjusted. Um, I, I, yeah, I pretty much agree with you guys. I feel like here's Sam Adams. Here's like the stones and the, you know, the, the founders and other places we've done. And then like Sierra Nevada is like right in the middle. It's like they're a step up from like a Sam Adams, a new Belgium, somebody like that, but they're not quite on the level of a stone founders from like consistency throughout their entire lineup. Like most founders beers I get are like at the very, at the very least, most of them are, are good. Um, when it comes to Sierra Nevada, there's way too many misses and it's not like they have an overly crazy, like amount of misses. Like it's not like for every beer I drink from them, that's great. One is just absolutely horrible. It's like, you drink four of them and one of them is just going to be like, eh, like the tropical torpedo or, or like the sidecar or, or, you know, some of the, the barrel aged beers, some of their, some of their ones that where they're trying to be a little bit too special. I feel what Sierra Nevada does do good though, is we talked about the nooner, uh, the Keller vice. They do a lot of the older styles like the Palau so well that it's like, you kind of want to go back to those beers specifically from them. You don't really, I, I don't really care too much to get like the new specialty yeah. from Sierra Nevada. It's like, I just, you know, give me your Palo, give me your Torpedo. You know, where's the Keller Vice at? Where's the Nooner? I, even though those styles for me aren't like, grav I don't gravitate towards them. If I want a good one, a well-made one that is in the U.S. that I can get easily, those are usually good go-tos. Um, rating would probably be a 375, uh, you know, on board with everyone but Rod because, you know, he's going to give everyone a quarter point because he has a show and he wants everyone to love him. So I understand. He doesn't want to – Ken Grossman, he doesn't want to upset the man. Four out of five is a solid number, 375, you, you know. Don't get kidding. in the top no, fifty kidding. by giving three seven fives. Yeah, you don't. You don't get in the top fifty of a wine. <laughs> I'm the wine. The wine category. <laughs> From the top fifty, I get a four out of five, baby. <laughs> baby, dilly, dilly, have more pungent cheese, baby. All that stuff. No, to to segue though from saying that they don't, they're inconsistent. A good segue would would be. The beer camp across whatever the hell the year is. It used to be America, then it was the world, then it was this. Next year will be Mars. Yeah, next will be a beer camp across the galaxy, daddy. Um, <laughs> the, the, the thing about it is the concept is awesome concept. They take 12 other breweries, they do collab with them, and they usually play to the strengths of whatever the brewery is. So if they go to, like this past year, they did the uh, East Meets West. <laughs> Joe D was having <laughs> issues in his uh, share of beer trying to say East Meets West. He just kept on saying, Miss Miss, he just was messing it up constantly. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's kind of hard trying to say East Meets West real quick, and it's, <laughs> it, it is difficult. Um, but they did that beer with Treehouse, and Treehouse is known for the New England style IPA being one of the better New England style producers. So many people were disappointed with that beer because you're going into it thinking it's going to be this amazing, juicy, you know, fruity beer, and it was like it's good, but I probably can go to my local, you know, brewery or local bottle shop and get like twenty that are better right off the shelf. And there was a lot of, uh, I think, problems with the beer camp across whatever for the last couple of years too, because they put a lot of IPAs in those packs. And when you're doing something on this grand scale where you need to brew all these beers and have them thrown in uh, packaging and get them out to all your distribution areas, a lot of these IPAs are showing up fresh, already like two months old, fresh, fresh in your area, two months old. I, I don't think any of us are the, you know, the, oh my God, I won't drink a beer that's two months old as an IPA because, oh my God, but when it shows up fresh and it's something new and you're looking forward to trying, if the beer is two months old and it's an IPA, it's like... Well, if you didn't get it fresh, now it's three months old. Yeah. And you don't get what they, the intention was for that beer, what they intended for that beer. And I think that gets lost too because people drink and be like, oh, it's not that great. Well, if it's already two, two months old and it's a treehouse beer, it probably isn't going to be awesome. So I, I would like them to continue the series but focus more on styles that aren't time sensitive like a hop for, you know, a pale ale and IPA, double IPA. Brew some awesome porter stouts barley wines you know do some german style beers whatever something that where it's not time sensitive for the hops and that's what i felt i don't know about you guys about this year's beer camp but 
more of the beers that weren't hop forward, I enjoyed the most because it just seemed like they were good and it, I didn't really care about how fresh they were. It was just solid. But uh, I think I think it's an awesome idea. I think the execution has been lacking since they've tried it. They're going to continue to do it, I think, because that's kind of like one of their things going on now. I'll probably buy it next year again because I'm a sucker, but I don't I don't know, hold out a lot of hope that it's going to be much better. Yeah, I didn't buy their beer pack this year, but and last year I did. Okay. You didn't buy it this year, Todd, either? No, I didn't get it either. I think it was like twenty nine ninety nine or thirty four ninety nine. I just wasn't going to give that much for it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? what? Uh, yeah, it was like it was like twenty twenty two twenty four dollars here. That's crazy. It was that much. Yeah, I think around here it was twenty nine last year. They brought it down, but this year I think it was right the same. And don't know if they adjusted it or not. Oh, that's rough. I wouldn't buy it. Either. I want to say the first year I got picked it up. The first year they had it was like nineteen ninety nine, maybe or something. Along those lines. Yeah, it was like twenty bucks the first year, like twenty one ninety nine. Yeah. It, was, it was lower lower twenties, high teens. And for and maybe it's so popular they thought, hey, we can charge everybody ten dollars more. And I was like, yeah, it wasn't all that great the first time. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't mind paying. In that, in that scenario, what, 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 what's the scenario? Okay, uh, in that scenario. In in that scenario for the third time because I just repeat myself because I'm. A Are you like Joe? You can't say East West. No, I can't. I, I, I'm gonna say <laughs> West meets East instead. No, it's one of those things where. Uh, Two bucks a bottle isn't bad, even the mixed pack. When you understand what they're doing to collab with twelve different breweries, like two bucks a bottle is not crazy. Oh no, but, that's but a, three bucks a no, bottle no. or like two and a half? Eh, eh, nah, I'm good. Like I'm good. That's a little bit too much. You don't. You know, that's six dollars. That's I, oh, three bucks. If we I'll be dust today for two twenty nine. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But I'm a cheap Ru ass, so. Wow. Well. Yeah, and that, I mean, it's all in the eye of the beholder, what you're willing to spend. I mean, that's another thing with craft beer. Somebody else's loss is someone's gain, vice versa. It how, it's how it goes. Uh, read the comments real quick, and then we'll get on to our favorite and least favorite beers from them, and then we'll just close it because then it's done, I think. Um, Paul says he hates their stout and porter. I never was a fan of their paleo, but most of their stuff is either spot on or just awesome. I guess he... I guess he loves them then. I don't know. It's weird in comment. Gabriel says it's 11 p.m. here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's 67 outside now. Now the man's bragging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 1024 here. Yeah, it's 1026 here, and it's like 35 degrees outside. Not cool. Um, awesome weather in Phoenix, though. Awesome weather. Oh, uh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Uh, Paul says your idea of slamming someone and mine are a bit different, Eric. Joe is, Joe's is closer to mine. but Yeah, but neither is a Lions ticket. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Oh, we are six and five. Okay. Sure. Same same record as the Bills. Both will miss the playoffs. Should be fun. Um, <laughs> Gabriel says the beer that has a lot of ginger is Ruby Red Shiner uh, from Shiner, uh, Texas beer, which is their yeah the Ruby Red. Um, I don't know. Does it have does the Ruby Red have ginger in it? I don't know. I, I've drank that before, but. I'll take his word for it. Um, Paul says, yeah, Tropical Torpedo was lame. So was the Hop Oiled one, Hop Hunter. But I can't remember the name offhand. Three, I meant three. He said 3.6, and they said I meant 3.5. Ha, ha, ha. No one's laughing, Paul. Uh, Billy from Backwoods Craft Beer comes back and says, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to him. Cheers, Billy. And then Paul says, don't tell me what I might like, Eric. <laughs> but he, he used the F word. I'm not going to. to totally. Totally. Totally PG here. Never use that word in this chat. Um, Gabriel says the Cowboys are winning. They're playing tonight against the. Oh, they are playing the. Uh, Cowboys the are Washington not. NFL team. Yeah, the Washington NFL team. <laughs> Cowboys are not winning, man. They're not. Um, <laughs> Paul says, "Too bad. Hope they lose." He's, I think he's talking about the Cowboys because he's a Steelers fan, even though he doesn't follow the sports balls all that too much. Um, Bum says. The more Jody drank, the better he started pronouncing East meets West. And that's that's uh that's true. Um Paul says eats meets beast. Or sorry, eats meets best. Yeah, I don't Paul, I don't know what you're doing. He says PA fresh, six months old minimum. Yeah, that's that's your that's your jam. And then uh Craig, last message says torpedo is solid. 
No hashtags, though. So no hashtags? Hey, no. Craig, 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 use the hashtag next time, all right? <laughs> Craig, hashtag now. Craig, <laughs> I should be a moderator, therefore I will block you, but I'm not a moderator, so you caught a break. Um, yeah, so uh, I, the next, I guess we'll just finish it up. Basically, uh, we'll go with, um, you know, your guys' favorite beers and least favorite beers that you've had. We'll start with Todd because it's Todd. <clears throat> It's top. It's top. Yeah, one of my favorite. One of my favorites from them is Narwhal. I like that one. Um, Bigfoot's is solid. Um, Celebration. Celebration is a good one too. You know, you just as, as a seasonal. First year, first time I've had it in a couple of years, but it's kind of reminded me back of why I haven't gotten it every single year. But yeah, those. I mean, if you know, the pale ale is a good solid pale ale. Also, I'll, you know. I'll put that one in there as well. What when you said celebration, for some reason I didn't think about this earlier, but I just had the the Rick James sketch from Dave Chappelle. It's a celebration, <laughs> bitches. Yeah, that's uh <laughs> what it comes down to. It is a celebration. Okay, so uh how about you, Rod? What's your favorite, least favorite? Uh the favorite would probably be between the Bigfoot and Narwhal. I mean, but the pale ale is pretty solid as a nice little pale ale. Put a foot or narwhal. The least it would be sidecar. Just got nothing out of that one. I'm not, that I'm not a sidecar rider. I'm just no. Just can't do it. Can't do it. Not like <laughs> said, not horrible. Not, do it. not gonna do it. Wouldn't be prudent. <laughs> just your just your prudent. average orange flavor type beer. Kind of like yeah, I didn't really do anything. Did not yeah. move the needle for me, so to say. I, I can't disagree with you. I think that's uh, a lot of their, you know, a lot of their beers that they've come out with in the last couple of years that have been fruited, whether it's like the sidecar or the tropical torpedo. I think those have been misses for most people. I mean, drinking the sidecar is like Dusty Rose, hot times. Hot it's hot times <laughs> drinking this tropical torpedo, baby. <laughs> You got your path in fruit, maybe in your peaches. I don't know what's happening. Come on, daddy. Okay, uh, Ooh, Eric. <laughs> this is baby dog. Baby dog. Baby. <laughs> baby. Saturday night, Eric. What is your favorite uh, Sierra Nevada and least favorite? Narwhal. Or narwhal. But the pale ale comes in at a close second. The torpedo comes in at third. The, the Bigfoot, to me, and I've had the Bigfoot before, I'm not a big barley wine guy. So mm -hmm. that kind of undercuts a lot of i know rod's a big fan of that but to me it's i, I must not be a big barley wine guy so i can't quiet taste i, I can't recommend that for anybody but oh that, baby it's actually it's celebration the, the, celebration is a close one to me too What's yeah right? yeah he said celebration was celebration is a close one up there for me too oh yeah i haven't had the celebration but though, so but, i can't I can't you being relatively new eric too into craft beer the last couple of years barley wine is if you're, and again, there's American style barley wines and there's English style. The English are going to be more malt driven, usually sweeter, like a lot, a lot of dark fruits where the American versions are going to be more hop forward, where you get a lot of those same characters, but they're dialed back. And then you get you know, a lot of the hop forward characters. I would say to recommend to you to try some English barley wines. I'll ask Paul in the comments to list some for you because he is an English barley wine fiend. He's all about them. But I, Oh, go ahead, Joe. Keep going. No, I say if, if someone, I mean, he's, I, I, I mean, I could go look it on tap or whatever. Th off the top of my head, like I'm just thinking straight and Paul, straight English barley wines that aren't barrel aged, that aren't adjunct, just like what is a great English barley wine. Like Thomas Hardy Ale is like an old ale English barley wine, but you really can't get it, but you might be able to get it later, or I was going to say later this year, you know, in the next four weeks, I guess, or early next year. But there's some really good classic. English barley wines actually from England that you can probably get in local bottle shops. So, Paul, if you can think of any, throw some down there because I think Eric, like every other style, it's acquired taste, but what you find when you like, you kind of know what you're going for. But I, I think English would be your your preference over American. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it is. Um, yeah, so my favorite, I mean, it's like I, I don't even know why I would do this because it's all the same. No, uh, Bigfoot for me, I'm kind of with Rod. I like Bigfoot. I've actually had the barrel aged one before. The first year it was released, yo, that fucking beer is great. It's great. 
It's great. It's expensive. It's twenty dollars, but it's great. Um, an eight, an aged Bigfoot for me, like a three or four year old aged Bigfoot, is just phenomenal because all the hop hoppiness dies down and you get more of the malt and it just becomes like one of those great sippers. Uh, I love Narwhal Celebration is fantastic. Torpedoes good, you know, for being like a standard nice can get it everywhere IPA. Least favorite, oh. Uh, I could probably name like like a half dozen out of the uh, beer cap across <laughs> whatever's. Um, if I had to go for the like whole a red series, you're gonna like the whole series. Like yeah. no, I could like half of the every box from each year is just like in my least favorite. Um, <laughs> but if I actually had to go with with one, I'd probably go with the sidecar or uh, the tropical torpedo. Just from I actually didn't check those in. Why are you giving me shit then? I'm not giving you shit. I know I hate them too. I I'm with you. My fives all around. <laughs> no, this the side cut. It's just again, I, there are really good fruited beers. There's been fruited pale ales and, and IPAs I like. I just they didn't. They took the. It seems like they took the base pale ale and the base torpedo and was like, here's some fruit. And I'm like, yeah, it's not great. Um, and I, it's sad. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's sad because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that they like it and there's nothing wrong with it. But it's crazy that both of those beers are now apparently a part of their year-round catalog because apparently it's selling extremely well both of those beers to be in the year-round uh, distinction. So I don't I don't know what's happening. I don't want to know what's happening. Sierra Nevada is doing some bad things. Anyway, as a whole, I think we all like Sierra Nevada. Hits more, more, more hits than misses, but definitely more misses yeah. than a lot of the other uh, breweries that we've done on the show. Um, they're good if you want to try out their their staples, their classics. I would probably, you know, steer. It's funny that you, you're drinking that Pronto IPA rod. And it's nowhere on their site, so yeah. props to them for not updating. This is Trade Joe exclusive. 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 So DJ Khaled. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, Saturday night. Saturday night. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean I'm again this is it's not like we're doing some small brewery or whatever that maybe people I mean I'm sure everyone out there said Sierra Nevada, so I mean they're they're good for what they are. Nothing crazy. Um I can't wait until they're no longer craft, should be a lot of fun. There was actually rumors a couple months ago about them potentially selling out. I remember seeing uh, different articles and stuff and people talking about it. Now if they were to sell out or they were to actually be but even if it was like 20% by a big conglomerate, that would be a shit storm because people are like, that's that's like the face of craft than it has been for like 40 years. So it's going to be interesting to see when one of those big boys get bought out by another big boy, but a bigger boy than that boy. Confusing myself, confusing everybody, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so Sierra Nevada, great times. Next week, what are we doing? Have we figured it out? Oh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, Avery, something out. we'll let the people know. Let my people know. Yeah, it's probably gonna be something we all can get. I mean, there's there's still <laughs> a lot that coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought we were gonna do Avery next. Oh, oh, what a heel let's, does a buy out. Let's segue. Uh -oh, it's like a uh -oh. roller coaster. Uh -oh. Yeah, we, we can, can we go there. We could do Avery. Why we not? Could, we could also not do Avery. Is that what I mean? There's a lot. We'll do Avery. Mark it down. Avery next week. All right. There it is, Avery. The U.S. Stockade, big A. Great. You know, the great thing is that I have beers in my cellar from Avery because I'm never spending another nickel on their beers again. <laughs> well, like, this is a green, this is green sellout. <laughs> How dare they sell out? I'm writing it down. It's going down yeah. right now. Oh, I'll spend dollars and dollars on them. <laughs> you'll, you'll just buy the whole lineup. Hey, All the barrel age. Next week. Maybe. Maybe. Nah, maybe. Nah, maybe. maybe. Title. Maybe. To get beat down. Who knows the title? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll do one quick check of comments, and then you can do whatever the hell you want, Rod, because this is your channel, and you run it how you want. Except for not doing Avery next week. All right, so uh, <laughs> Frank says, hashtag, 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 hashtag. Just Frank, hashtag. You, nice, Frank, nice. Nice. Craig, you probably can get Avery over there, but even if you can, you don't want, nope, not invited. Um, Paul says, love torpedo out of a can better than the bottle. I've never actually had it out of the can. Any of you guys? Torpedo? Not out of the can, I don't think I have. I had pale out of the can. Yeah, I've had pale too. Uh, Paul says, hashtag, it's Todd. That's how I'm going to introduce Todd going forward. Be like, Todd, what do you think? Because it's Todd. Hashtag. It's Todd. No hashtag. Hashtag, it's Todd. <laughs> 
Those hashtags can just get buried somewhere. Um, Paul says ruthless rye was great. That is that is yeah, a, that, that is a, a good one, actually yeah. I wish they would bring that back. Um, he says, oh, God damn it! He started with all the hashtags. Hashtag barrel aged narwhal. Hashtag mustache rider. Hashtag hard times. Hashtag hashtag. <laughs> hashtag I won't help Joe. Hashtag are we on Instagram now? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag I hope you're getting hacked right now. <laughs> hashtag Paul was in the woods. Yeah, hashtag F off. <laughs> hashtag it puts the lotion in the basket. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag dilly dilly. Oh, hashtag dilly dilly. Hashtag dilly 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 dilly. <laughs> Some more of your m more pungent dilly. Yeah, well. I just I can't like it's funny because you do Dusty Rhodes, but like Greg from Greg's beer reviews is like you could just kind of just seamlessly just turn into Greg at some point. If you start complaining about be like, oh, they're coming for you, baby doll. What are we gonna do? What about those bottle on dates, baby? Yeah, it's a seamless transition. <laughs> Any more comment? <laughs> uh, last but not least, Paul says, what if Stone and Sierra Nevada bought into each other 50-50? They would be unbeatable. No, they'd probably still be the same. <laughs> 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 they would just, Greg Cook and Ken Gross would just give each other high fives. Yeah, we own 50-50 of each other's breweries. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, thanks for all the comments tonight. And, uh, because we care, we give Eric the spotlight. Yeah, we, I think we we need to shout out the like Craig from Ken Spear Reviews, Gabriel who showed run up, it, Billy, yeah, run it, run it down, Billy right Bum, Paul, no, Paul, Paul. <laughs> I don't yeah. want Paul's yeah. Paul. Yeah. <laughs> no, Chris, Chris on the tenth. There were six. Channel, Billy has channel. Billy actually has some interviews out there with some of the local breweries. So yeah, definitely give Billy's channel a shout out. There yeah. Day. He is a, uh, oh, it's just a long name. I got to find his comment here. It is uh backwoods. You like Lance and make it. Up. Yeah. Uh, guys go, go check out Chuck's uh, front room uh, wine reviews. Uh, it's fantastic. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, back, it's, back, it's, uh, it's backwoods, Billy craft beer reviews. It's a mouthful. Hashtag Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah, but shout out to everybody. I also missed uh, Chris from on the 10th. Uh, Gabriel, who uh, he showed up tonight and, you know, Appreciate bragged about. Subscribe to you, Gabriel. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the comments. Also, I appreciate the temperature in Phoenix right now because uh, it sounds like an amazing time. It's awesome. And uh, uh, even hashtag good night. Shout out to Beers and Barbells, too, because they just subscribed earlier tonight. Yeah. Nice. They're, uh, they're doing all right. So, Eric and his. A S P. A S P. <laughs> Man, it's just backwards. It's just backwards. <laughs> it's elastic right now. <laughs> guys, had too much drink. Please get a designated driver. You guys, if you guys are subscribers <laughs> to my channel, subscribers to my, you guys should know that you, you should, really shouldn't be driving home drunk if you've been at the bar or anything. Get it Uber, a tax, a taxi, a Lyft. Uh, call a buddy to come get you. Ask the bartender to get you a cab or something because if you do you're gonna get pulled over you're gonna do this stupid ass sobriety test and you get a free ride to jail then you get court fees and then possible prison time and then if you hit or kill somebody you, get, you guys know you're gonna be in the slam for a while and if you kill yourself you're gonna be six feet under and all you've done is uh hurt your family and friends so sleep off your bus and get your car the next day also a horse and buggy is another option as well there you horse go. And buggy is another especially option. if you're not like amish country I'm and sure. that's all because <laughs> we care yeah, no. yeah. Uh, speaking of horses, sometimes you may have to look for some horsemen. So you always want to be, you want to know how to do it. Who's their damn phone? Horseman goes by the name of Rick. I'm not here. Are you all? Awesome? <laughs> what can I do for you? Friday night, you can see me in war game. Blue Dog Spot, Blue Dog Rex, and the Funky Brother. Yeah, I'm looking for a horseman goes by the name of Rick Flair. Don't know. Can I leave a message? I can. All right, write this down. Tell him it's Big Dust. Okay. The American Dream. Okay. Tell him to meet me Friday night, Starcade. Meet you at the Starcade. Yeah, Starcade, Friday night. Uh, that, I, I don't know what you're wasting your time for. Is this Baby Dog? <laughs> baby Dog, I know that was you, you Jezebel! 
This is the best one. Yeah, bought them horsemen. Yeah, funny, I mean, they. <laughs> yes, sir. This big dust going on behalf of Crocker Promotions. You know, they understand what you're saying. Lift. Uh, what about <laughs> why? Oh, he did. Sorry. No, I don't really know what you're talking about. Is this JJ Dillon's? <laughs> don't lie to me, JJ. <laughs> Go way back, yeah. Where are you? Yeah, you got your own work. <laughs> With the American dream, JJ. My eyes are open. As big as silver dollars, yeah. Well, you got the wrong guy. Oh, you got JJ. Yeah. Master Strap Match. Justin Rhodes is the master of the Strap Match. JJ giving you a yellow dog. <laughs> So if you're ever looking for a horseman, you just want to know it right. So there you go. McCray, <laughs> legend himself, America Dream. I'm looking for some horsemen. How many? Four. <laughs> it's so good. That all being said, thanks for everybody hanging out tonight. Appreciate it. And we're going to go ahead and close it out because we went a little bit long tonight. But uh, hopefully you guys are out there getting your beer on and doing a nice little brew. Look forward to catching you guys next time. Keep drinking those good craft beers. Cheers. Anybody else got closing thoughts? We hope you guys enjoyed nope. this video, and we hope to see you again. Deuces. And we out. <laughs>